what may or may not become some semi-regular bit about us talking about the game. Yep. And we're yep. here on Debbie Lou's stream, if you're familiar with us. We are some of the individuals who host uh, our quasi-regular War Machine fight nights where we host and stream and commentate on some games of War Machine, courtesy of our good friend Eric, whose lovely stream, Debbie the Loot, we are occupying. Uh, we wanted to call our show Unplayable Garbo, but uh, following the score errata, we feel like we need to change it to Unbeatable Garbo. Unbeatable Garbo. Unbeatable Garbo. So what we're going to do now is we're actually planning on just kind of going through the score and errata, <coughs> item by item, uh, talking about our experiences with it because... Uh, as it turns out, all three of us have quite a bit of experience with Scorn in Mark III um, because Jordan, who, and we'll do a little bit of introduction here in a second, did uh, adopted Scorn for Mark III. Yep. And as two of his primary play partners, we have a lot of experience yep. playing against Scorn. Um, so the Scorn errata affected, I guess, our local meta uh, quite a bit and will continue to shake out over the week. So real quick, um, for those who don't know, my name is Jeff Olson. I am the event coordinator at Mox Board House, the greatest board gaming store uh, in the world. Uh, I run... Uh, it's true. That's true. It's true. Uh, I can't, it, it can't is deny it. Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, my job here is I run and host uh, a large variety of the events and tournaments and so forth that we run here. And one of my primary focuses, focuses is uh, War Machine, the War Machine community. Um, I run about three tournaments a month. We host War Machine Weekend qualifiers and online gauntlet, Iron Gauntlet qualifiers. So we do a lot of War Machine stuff here and really proud of the community we built. Um, and then sharing the station with me are two of my very regular community members who I have a lot of respect and love for. On my right is Jordan Lamb, uh, yep. Triple Crown winner. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, with Scorn. <laughs> with Scorn. No, 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 pre Lambo. Uh, pre pre, pre -errata. errata Scorn, Triple Crown winner, winning all three of the different tournament series I run in a month back-to-back. -back. The first and only Triple Crown winner currently. Um, and then on my left is Andrew Swedberg, uh, who is a now – an LCQ, actually, you're, you just say what you did, War Machine Weekend. So uh, I made day two in LCQ. Made day two in LCQ, okay. War Machine Weekend, um, and regularly travels around the country participating in high-level tournaments. So yep. uh, has a really strong grasp of competitive and high-level play. Um, so that's a little bit about us, us and what we kind of offer. Um, and so now we're actually going to jump into the errata and just kind of take it um, – item by item, and if anyone has any questions about it and you're here in chat with us, feel free to ask them and we'll get back to you. And if you happen to be watching this uh, afterwards, feel free to drop a note to Divi Loot's YouTube or send a note on Twitch, and we we'll would be welcome to get back to you later uh, on that. So our first little item here in the Scorn Errata is Lord Tyrant Hexerus, which is Hexy 1. Hexy 1. Um, so I'm just going to run through all the quick changes, and we're going to talk a little bit in depth for those that warrant those changes. So his War Beast points went down, slight nerf. Uh, he gained great power in exchange for losing Blood Boon. Uh, he ditched Influence in exchange for Sunder Spirit, and he got rid of Spirit Leech uh, for Parasite, and then there was uh, an update to his feet that allows Backstrike bonuses... Um, uh, to be made. To be made on targets. All right. So first off, Warby's change, whatever. I, I think it was a, a negative one modifier it, to that. Yeah. Do, I think he was a 29 before. Did that, did that even really matter? I mean, uh, the, the moral of the story is he got a strict upgrade in spells and abilities. Basically, the everything else is better. Points is, is negligible. Yeah. It, the one point difference really doesn't matter. Yeah. So Seems it's like, like a kind of arbitrary change. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't disagree. Um, I think it was basically a like a... We're throwing a bone in yeah. the sense of like, hey, we understand we're making some changes to this guy. Let's tweak him down a little bit. I, I think – so a lot of people sort of complained about Hexy 1 in the community, um, and a big reason behind that was they felt that his feet didn't do anything. But they're also wrong in the sense that, yeah, his feet might not do much in the current meta – but his feet will do things once infantry, if and or when they come back into style. It's one of the best infantry killers in Scorn. Exactly. So if you're not super familiar with his feet, it basically says when you kill an enemy model, <coughs> living or undead, you take control of that model, it makes a three-inch advance, and it uh, makes an attack. So basically for every dude you kill, that dude maybe goes and kills another dude. Yep. So you're basically double-dipping on your dude killing. Um, the 
what was limp about that was that you did not get backstrike bonuses. Be, and because typically, obviously, you take control of the guy, walk him behind one of his buddies, and poke him in the back. Yep. And that's not the, that was not the case. Uh, they removed that element to it. Now you do get the backstory. Because classically, you're like, I don't know. Let's look at, like, your infantry you run as a circle player is like a Reeve. Yeah. What's his defense? It's like def 13, arm 13. And what's his mat? Mat 5, pow 8. So without the backstrike bonus, he's walking up and going like, meh, I, I miss. I hope I get an 8. Yeah. Nope. Now it's a 6, which yeah. is going to happen. He definitely really needs that, that added bonus from the yeah. backstrike, mm -hmm. especially with the vast majority of a lot of the infantry that we are currently seeing. Yeah, it's really uh, bad at killing other members right, of its unit. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and the, having the backstrike bonus is a huge change for that. Um, and it it's helps. very interesting going a forward. And I still see a couple community members, you know, kind of complain about the feat a little bit, you know, following the changes. Mm -hmm. But, again, I, I feel like the issue here is it's a great feat. It might not be great this second, but it's still extremely strong. You can't expect every feat to be good all the time for every meta. So if you just wanted a feat that said, oh, all Warbees and Warjacks get minus five armor, well, it's a great feat right now. But what happens when people aren't running that stuff anymore because imagery is back in style? Then you're like, oh, this feat sucks. So it's unplayable. It, 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 it's unplayable Garbo. Unplayable Garbo. So it's, oh, it's okay for him, to feat, for him to have a feat that's weaker now because it has the potential of being stronger later. Yeah. Um, and it just and it just strictly got improved. Uh, let's kind of reel it back to the top of the list. Uh, he got great power because he's a little upkeep heavy, right? It's so death he's got march. two upkeeps that he particularly wants to keep. He wants to death keep death march and parasite. Death march and parasite, or death march and uh, soul slave, which is his. Oh yeah, spell, yeah. So uh, which he also has. Yeah, so he has soul slave, which makes one of his war. So basically, I think what this change is essentially saying is, is he gets an arc node mm -hmm. without paying a cost for it, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, then he's casting traditional upkeeps and maintaining them as expected, mm -hmm. Death March and Parasite. Let's talk about Parasite real quick because that's definitely it's like really good spell. the big spell change to the card. It's a it's minus huge. three armor debuff. It's a massive damage swing, right? Yep. Um, so, I mean, that, that's sort of like the elephant in the room, right, is, is Parasite. So where are we going to be seeing Parasite? I mean, is, is there anything this is bad with? No. Parasite? It uh, I mean, Parasite in and of itself is a good, sp like, it, it is broad spectrum useful against pretty much everything. I mean, it works against units, works against models. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. I mean, but be it. Is there anything that this is enabling that was going to struggle <coughs> previously? Uh, slingers. Yeah. Slingers uh, now, and we saw this a little bit earlier this afternoon when you guys played a game. Yeah. yeah. Slingers have basically become POW 13 weapon masters against constructs. Which um, is kill shifting stones, real good. Yeah. Yes, they do. Uh, and in, in case you're not aware, all warjacks are constructs now. Oh yeah, would change with Just Mark by III. default. Uh, well, they so were always constructs. They've clarified by giving this an icon. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. so, um, so it's good into like a lot of that. Mm -hmm. uh, re or I'm um, sorry, rather on the reef thing, Venator Reavers. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, are basically POW 15 against large bases. Which is Real good. Uh, real good. Every war beast is now just like pow twenty or twenty one after being enraged, yep. basically or something. Mm -hmm. There's, there's, it's just, it's basically. I mean, it's definitely the biggest arm swing spell in the game, right? Is um, there anything this? I don't think I there's. I think a it's minus the highest four. one. Yeah. I think you have to stash. And then the only question mark is like, what's better, this or crippling grasp? This is the face I I'm mean, making. They, uh, <laughs> they do I mean, different things. Yeah, they, but I mean, a big part of it obviously is, is the, the armor yeah. element, right? So, like across the board, if you had to just like, and, the, and, and I'm just throwing this out here, we didn't talk about this at all. Um, if you just had to like rate Hexy on sort of like the classic like F to S scale based on what he currently stands at now, where would you put him? Uh, I don't know, Jordan. He's your caster. Where would you put him? So. In context of the current meta, I would say C minus. Interesting. Um, outside of context of the meta, I would say like a B. I don't know. You, he's you probably like a B ish. Parasite's really good, especially yeah. with all yeah, the warjacks we're seeing. And and and, and I guess to be fair too, we we have pretty limited experience, but we did get a game in within this afternoon, right. mm -hmm. so we at least got to see it happen. Yeah. Um. And so it'd be like that B ish range. Yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah, I th I probably would rate him like a high ish B personally. If only because Arc Node plus 
um, Parasite is just like potentially that good. Yeah. I mean, we haven't even talked. We haven't even like begun to grasp the straws of like what happens when you have an Archadon with long leash and it's just right. all going all over the place and arcing stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then like let's kind of bring it in real quick too is like and then Sunder Spirit, right? Sunder Spirit is a strong nuke or it's a decent nuke. It's a good and one. And it has a lot of value, especially in the world we're playing in where now where it's like. Rage is a big deal as Rage an animus. Rage and Primal and are, Rush. Are big, an, are big animi. And if they just have a Mountain King or a Mauler or a Feral, mm-hmm. and you're like, oh, but by the way, you, you don't get that animus now. Yeah. And you you're don't like, get your Rage and you can't kill my models Sun anymore. Spirit was another huge change. That, 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 that feels yep. pretty bad. So no. um, I, I think there's lots of value to be had there. And I, yeah. think, he, I think he has a lot of potential to be unlocked. Yes. Yes. I, I think he's definitely benefits from having a well-tested, well-thought-out list after some testing. Yeah. Uh, the meta might not be ready here for him right now because no one's running right. amazing amounts of infantry. And, and I think my my specific look and rating on that was a little skewed by our game that mm-hmm. we had. Because his feet, I didn't cast his feet, yeah. or I didn't use his feet at all. He played Hexy 1 versus Bradigus, yeah. by the way. Literally does nothing. Uh, uh, does his feet, his feet RFPs, I presume, too, right? Probably. It just has to. Yeah, remove the model from play. Yeah. Like, he might just be a good high reclaimer drop. Yeah. Because high reclaimer tends Anyone to bring. Who wants to bring models back. And high reclaimer tends to want, brings models because yeah. he's looking for various <coughs> weird ways to use his feet. And he go, oh, I, these Vingers are coming from weird places. And these um, uh, cleansers are coming from weird places. Yeah. And you're like, oh, by the way, I, I totally RFP'd that guy. Pretty scary for him. Yeah. So high that reclaimer. Usually doesn't want to have to kill models himself if he can help it. Mm-hmm. All right. Do we feel like we've kind of touched on Hexy? So let's yeah. keep moving. Uh, I'm I'm kind of sad that this is like the next thing because I feel <laughs> like it's the thing that should like be sort of last and like talk uh, about the most. I mean, we can skip back to it. We can come back to it later. Skip over it. Come back <laughs> to it later. <laughs> I kind of want to. I mean, I feel like this is the you one that we're gonna have to the it? most to talk about, right? Yeah. Well, you know, let's just, we know we're here. Let's just follow the list down. Let's the do one. It. Okay. All right. So Makeda one. Uh, Probably the most revamped of all of the war ca- warlocks from Hor- uh, from Scorn. Um, so she had subjugation of will, which basically said your battle group has shield guard. Now she just has field marshal shield guard without having to cast um, a spell. Without having to cast a spell. Uh, the lash was a super generic and underwhelming nuke. Now it basically says if you hit the model, that model that casts a spell. And there's a little bit of a question about this, as if it's if say Marketh casts it, who actually cast it. Anyways, if you hit a model with this spell, you or another model can advance two inches, so it's a threat extender. Yeah. Uh, she gained Jackhammer, which is you poke one of your beasts and it makes an attack. Uh, and then her ch- uh, feet totally changed from basically all the dudes that die come back and don't do anything to whenever one of your dudes dies, um, you can spend a point of life to keep him alive. Amazing. He doesn't fall down. He doesn't. Nothing weird happens to him. He just he just he just chills. Yep. He just Netflix and chills there. Yep. And then, oh by the way, all of your models have retaliatory strike. That is an amazing change. Yeah. Um, she went way up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. She very much so. and she might have very easily <coughs> rocketed. She she may become meta defining. I kind of hope she does. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Well, let's start at the top. So she got a strict upgrade by just gaining shield marshal field yep. guard. Yep. Saves. <laughs> one one fury a turn. Yeah, one hundred percent of the time. Um, it also can't be dispelled off. Yep. Yeah. And things. Which is huge. Uh, the lash uh, got a big upgrade because one, it's on hit, so it's not like she has to boost a hit because she's a fury six caster. Mm-hmm. Yep. And you need a boost because I believe the old lash required damage. Uh, now it's basically a, a mild but useful threat extender, and I think the more relevant part about it is that Marketh can cast it. Yes. So, Molokarn is going places. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> I, I would definitely like to see and wait and see what the the rulings are on Marketh casting it. I think it's still within like next to Makeda. I, yeah. I, I know it's being be talked true. about, and there probably is an answer. Sure, I'm like just not going to go and explore yeah. it right in now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When Deathjack casts an Excarnate, it still put the Bile Thrall next to Gatsby. Then mm-hmm. that probably means that it triggers off of Makeda. Yeah. Um, now we've now you've gotten a bunch of games in with. Makeda, 
we already. Have played her twice since since the changes. I feel like it's been more than that. I feel like, I feel no. like it's been like three or four. No, it's just been twice. Okay, whatever. It feels yeah. like a lot to me. Maybe two, it's two different iterations. Maybe because every more. game I just go whoa. Whatever yeah, I throw so the amazing. Game. Yeah. Um, um, we haven't had a chance to see the lash in action. I feel like you're gonna kind of build her around the lash if you're gonna use it, right? Yes. Yeah. You're gonna be like bronze back, Moloch Karn. Other bronze back or something, it's probably right? Probably like bronze back, Tiberian. I mean, you're the idea is you're going to launch your heavy at something. Yeah. yeah, it's just going to rip apart whatever it has. Just go thirty inches across the table. I, exactly. Or uh, Malakarn's going two. six, eight from rush, ten from this, um, charging thirteen with two inches of reach. Fifteen. Did I miss anything? There are random threat extenders in there. I just did not pick up on. Don't think uh, so. Let's see here. You were talking about Malakarn, right? Sure. So 19 if he uses both of them? Sure. He's going places if he yeah. wants to. It's yeah. back. It's back. He's, he's scary. Um, and then we have Jackhammer, which is you can poke one of your beasts within six inches and it makes an attack. Uh, also, so I have not seen this yet, but it doesn't mean it's not extremely strong. Uh, I, I think that this gives her the ability to, uh, uh, with another beast like Malakarn, just straight up kill your caster. Mm -hmm. Sure. Out of nowhere. I also personally think it's better on a Colossal. They hit harder. Yeah. Because the base is bigger and there is a limited range on this. Sure. Yes. If 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 my if my beast is getting someplace sensitive, let's say a caster, and like she walks up to Jackhammer, like however deep that is, like, mm -hmm. man, it, I hope it works because I'm probably gonna be dead next turn. Especially with the Desert Hydra, who yeah. has yeah. I mean, nine it, attacks. It is giving him fifteen attacks. Yeah. yeah. Doing this to kill a caster is, is definitely something you do at the end of the game, and if you don't, you probably are dead. Yeah. yeah. Um, so she's just, like, strictly way better. And, and yep. she's also way better because everything in the army got better around her. Like, faction-wide, yep. everything just well, got... Yeah, and that's we'll get the to the swordsman thing. later, it's but like, oh, my. We, it, w even if we take a all the rest of the changes out, she's still... The, hu the changes to her are just... Because, like, yep. obviously, like, you know, we'll get to, like, Ferox. They got a little bit of a buff. But, like, Ferox with her still would have just been strong. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, I played Ferox with her the other day, and it was <coughs> really, really good. Yeah. So it's it's just okay. It, it's great. Um, I mean, people are not going to know what to do. Well, and the, the thing is, and, and this is the other part of this, is the rest of her spell list that we haven't even talked about is still really oh, good. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, what I mean, else does she have? She, she just has Carnage. Has she has Quicken. She has uh, what is that other spell she's got? Um, Carnage and Quicken. I think. Carnage, I think it Carnage is. and Quicken. I think yeah. that's it. Uh, yeah. So Carnage is like, it's just everyone gets plus two mat basically. Yeah. Yep. Within twelve inches of, yep. of if you know if she's there, and then Quicken is oh my god like, it goes on your beast or it goes on your unit. I mean, mm -hmm. like oh there that's where we've got Quicken on Malakarn. Yeah. Aha. There yeah. You go. He's actually so out threatening six, her eight, control area. 13. 17. So, yeah, so that's... Uh. He will charge himself out of her control area. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, unless Marketh lashes her forward first, <laughs> and then she, like... It's all... Oh, anyways. Yeah. Uh, so Carnage is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I mean, but it, that almost kind of goes without saying. Yeah. Um, Quicken is incredible because... Especially like, when you stack that with the Kraya aura now. Yeah. You stack we'll it get with to Kraya, later. and then you stack it with the Hydra, which we will get to in a little bit. Mm -hmm. But... Just the, the amount of things that you can sack also make her very good into shooting, which mm -hmm. is exactly what the meta is right now. Like, there's a lot of very heavy shooting lists in the sure. meta. Sure, def 17. Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, what happens if you take a Ferox who's def 13? Goes up to a, right? Yeah, he's yeah. Uh, 13, 17. Then he goes 17. up to a 15 from Quicken, and then 17 Kraya Animus? Yeah, so 17, yep. 19 after Kraya Animus and Quicken. Is and it goes from speed 8 to, to speed 10. Plus a five-inch jump. I think the moral of the story is is so we basically good. said that, like, we have a lot to talk about about Makeda, but we've kind of, like, sort of finished our analysis. Sure. Because what it really comes down to is Makeda, Makeda yeah. got great, but everything else got great, too, around her. Yep. So it's not just Makeda. It's, like, all this package came together, yeah. like the perfect storm. So mm -hmm. um, let's kind of move they past move, her, I think, a little bit. Yeah. But let's kind of give her a rating, too, I think is pr nominally worth – I don't know. It's fun to do. I don't know. It makes sure. it sound like we know what we're talking about. Sure. How <laughs> would you rate Makeda – uh, Based on our lim nominally limited experience now, I would say a plus. Sure, and I and I agree, and I think she's going to be meta potentially meta warping because she's bringing a ton of infantry that hit accurately and hit yep. hard. So it's like, well, 
screw your jacks, my Weapon Master Swordsmen are coming for you, or my Feroxes, and you can't kill any of my models, I jam you out of zones, I jam you out of scenario, I kill all your models. Yep. Like, she's bringing stuff back to the game that we were like, oh, this, we're not doing this anymore, and she's doing it well. Yep. And it's going to change what people have to take to kill it. Because if you can't kill 30 dudes... She plays a Crick's List. If you can't, by yeah. the way, if you can't play kill it thir if you can't kill 30 dudes, who, by the way, you can't kill for the first two curves of the game, <laughs> then you're just going to have a bad time, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's exactly... Her feet basically says that. Yep. All also, right. it puts a lot of pressure on clock, too. Yeah. yeah. What about you? I think she's somewhere like A-. minus. Yeah. Once people figure out what she does and they stop getting blindsided by her, I think people are going to start to figure out how to beat her. Uh, I'm, I'm currently sort of sitting... I don't disagree with... I, in fact, I totally she agree with your assessment. She's super strong, though. I'm going to probably put her sort of in that AA plus range as yeah. well at the moment. Um, but I, I think you're right. I think what I'm hoping that she does is she makes people rethink the way they have to write lists. Yeah. And once they start bringing the things to deal with it, then she might drop... But I think in dropping, she would have been healthy for the game. Yeah, a time lock feat oh, yeah. with a ton of infantry is still really good right yeah. now. <laughs> All right. Uh, Makeda 2. Makeda 2. Makeda 2 got basically, well, she got two very strong, but like functionally minor upgrades that are really good. First off, she good went from like 20. It was 24. 20, so she 24, 24 war beast, beast 27. So she went from she went from the number of war beast points that like a character unit or mm -hmm. like person with jack. Yeah. Basically, you know. Makeda three I think also has 24. Yeah, so. two normal points. Mm -hmm. And then her stay death, which is essentially her passive ability that sort of functions like Makeda's one's feet, yep. um, now can affect characters. Um, Makeda um, Makeda two was already sort of like the caster that Scorn had been gravitating to as one of the more competitive casters. And again, she just got functionally better. She gets to add a couple more points to her list, mm -hmm. and then now she's keeping key units like Redeem or Tyrant Vorkesh or, uh, oh, Legends of Halak. I almost brain fart on that entirely. The yeah. new Great Bears. Uh, oh, yeah. The, the, the Greater Bears. <laughs> the Greater Bears. The Greater Bears. <laughs> the greater bears. Um, keep all of them alive. People were doing things like running double Ferox with her or a fat Satrati brick. Or all sorts of things, and and you and I have played. I've played this list several times. I yep. really enjoyed it, and you played it once or twice. Yeah, I played it a couple of times. Um, and, I, and it's definitely like my kind of list. The fact that she's just sort of sitting there and attritioning you out by spinning fury to make sure you can't kill dudes. Yeah, and it just got better. It's also really yep. strong in scenario too. Yeah, oh you yeah. just stick a dude in there they can't kill with twelve attacks. Well, especially like a void spirit who's incorporeal. Yeah, There's only how many in, how many magic attacks do you really bring into the party? Sure. Oh yeah. Um. So, like, I'm not sure there's a ton to say on her, except, like, she just got better. Like, everything about her got better. Yeah, I, I think just the list that people have been already making will, mm -hmm. ju making will just get better as a result of these changes. I, I think, like, her feet is, like, super functional. Oh, yeah. But there's, like, nothing fancy about it. It's just, no. like, all your dudes get boosted attack rolls and can't be knocked down. You're, and you look at that and you're like, whatever. But you're like, her feet's really her passive ability to keep dudes alive. Yeah. And then she has a turn where all of her models hit and kill you. Yeah. Well, I mean, the great part, too, is you you take a Willbreaker and you put it on a unit of, say, Karax. Yeah. And, okay, now you get to tough roll. If you fail the tough roll with her feet up, they don't get knocked down. Yep. And if you failed it, you can still uh, stay death. Stay death. So, so you get stay death and you get tough. And you can make it again yeah. because they don't knock <laughs> – you can't get knocked down. Yeah, it's good. So uh, just straight better. Yep. Um, oh, yeah. I, I think, again, she's going to be a caster who kind of needs to be unlocked. And she sort of was getting unlocked. Yeah. So the double uh, Ferox list I've heard a lot of good things about. Yeah, and but it's not – it's tested, but it's not proven. Definitely. Right? Like, people have been playing it, and they've had great results with it, but we haven't seen it, like, hit. Place it in the vent. Exactly. Yeah. So tested, but unproven. And I think right. that's just a, a result of not a lot of people playing Scorn. Almost no one is playing level. Scorn. Yeah. yeah, I mean, or you was. At, at War Machine Weekend, you said there was one person at the I event? Saw, like – one, maybe two people. Yeah, which is just so few. I saw more cricks than I saw scorn. Yeah, which is. Bom, 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 bom. Yeah. Bom, bom. Uh, your rating for Makeda. Um, I think she's definitely in the B range. Um, I'm not quite sure she's good enough to hit that A tier, uh, but she's definitely like B, B plus. Uh, I have not played against her, so, so I'm just going to agree with Jordan. Okay, that's fine. It's okay to, to not submit a rating if you're unfamiliar with it. I have played her quite a bit, and I like her. Uh, I think that she is one of those casters where 
I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and say she's probably like a, a B or maybe even a high B. Mm -hmm. But I think maybe even actually, let's, I'll, let's be fair. I'm going to say she's probably kind of more like a low B. And the reason I say that is not because she's not a fantastic caster. It's because she's not a caster that you just play and is immediately good. Yeah. She's the kind of caster you have to play a That's lot, fair. become comfortable with, and understand how to build and run her list. She herself is probably a phenomenal caster, but you can't just be some guy like, oh, I'm just going to buy this list and play it. You're going to be bad at it. Like, it oh, takes yeah. a certain, like, I mean, mentality well, to play it. And I think you'll see this But I think you can pick up a, a really straightforward caster. Sure. Like a, like a striker one, right? He Who does just one like, thing really well. Exactly. Yep. And anyone can play it and with a marginal amount of success. Mm -hmm. I think this is the kind of caster that you have to put – like into. lots of effort and thought and tons of games yep. into to truly realize the potential. I understand I think all your her, options. Mm -hmm, both yeah. Mikada 2 and Mikada 1 now are very similar in that regard. Probably. Uh, I think Mikada 2 was a little bit more so just because your, your mitigation of uh, – you're, you're losing mitigation of damage on yourself by keeping other models alive. So you have to have the knowledge of what – how far you can push that and still be safe, mm -hmm. which requires a lot of very good game knowledge. Yeah. And, game and let's also be clear, like, the ratings were, we're basing all these ratings on the fact that, like, we're basically doing it purely off of the text, essentially. Like, yeah. like we've got some games in with some of this stuff, but we're basically essentially making the rating assuming that our ability to read the text and correlate that to effects in game yeah. is, has I, a certain... Yeah. I've played most of these casters, you have to see some but I have not table. played exactly. hardly any of them since um, the errata changes. I've yeah. focused on a couple... Uh, as a result of the invitation <laughs> this weekend, Excuse me. so. Um. All right. Uh, oh, yeah, let's actually mention that real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, so tomorrow is an, invita an invitational tournament here at Mox Boring House. Unfortunately, we'll be not will not be streaming it. Although that could potentially change, but I doubt it. Yeah. Um, but essentially, we've been running a, a six month with equates to a, almost like a ladder style system, mm -hmm. um, sure. where people who participate in tournaments accrue points based on how well they do. The top sixteen people. Uh, over the course of the last six months of tournament goers are participating in an invitational tournament tomorrow, of which both of you are actually actively participating. Yep. You are our top seated participant. Yay. And you were like third or fourth? Y something in like that, yeah. Yep. And so it was I it's the first season we've run I've run of this. We'll be starting the next season in February. Mm -hmm. Um and uh and we had I had like six Sixty or seventy unique participants, so that was really cool. Mm -hmm. But anyways, sort of back to what I'm just saying this for the sake of the viewing audience that uh, a lot of the focus the last couple of weeks would be people coming in and practicing their lists for, this. for that. Yeah. Yep. So while the score errata has come out and we've been sort of experimenting with it, that's been somewhat limited by the fact that we've been trying to find you've been trying to find lists to play for this tournament, yeah, definitely. as opposed to just like putting every caster and every model right. on the table. And I, I think once this is over, going forward in the next couple of weeks. I'll branch out and start playing some of the other ones yep. that kind of gotten changed, but um, at least for this weekend, I've been focusing on just the couple that I've been playing a lot lately. Yep. All right, so then we have Lord Assassin Morgul, uh, Morgul Two. two. Uh, he also got sort of a a big, pretty good buff. Yeah, a bunch of significant buffs. Oh yeah. Uh, first and foremost, he went to Focus or Fury Six. Um, the pow of his weapon increased by one, or I'm sorry, his like sword, the important one. Uh, he gained elite cadre for blood runners that give them parry. Uh, he got rid of ghost walk in favor of shadow play, which we'll talk about and explain how it works because it's strange. That's a real weird spell. And then he uh, gained mortality. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so first off, uh, uh, pow increase on weapon. Sure. So pow thirteen, pow 13 mean, weapon master. The, the nice the thing about be thirteen there, is nice. it it pushes you towards the the breaking point uh, of dice for a weapon master. Dice rolls. Yeah. Um, which is nice because it is a weapon master attack. Good. So. Uh, elite cadre for blood runners, they gain parry. That's just a, a nice upgrade. It's also very fluffy because you know, he's having, the Asaur Lord Assassin. Having played blood runners a lot, I've always wanted them to have parry. Sure. Like the apparition is and really good. And now they good. do. Yeah, and now <laughs> they do. Woo! Um, yeah, the apparition is not always good enough. Uh, all right, so that's Fury 6. Oh my God! Much bigger that feet. So yeah. much better. So for those who weren't familiar, his feet was all models in his control range are blinded. That was ten inches. Now it's twelve, which is four inches on either side of him, basically. Yep. It's a lot more area. Yep. Yeah. It also means he's a lot safer because you can shake blind. So being within ten inches of Anything. any Most war jack in the, the game, range, yeah. Uh, yeah. war beast in the game. Is there anything that doesn't threat ten inches if you're like a heavy chassis? 
No. I mean, all the hero ones yeah. without a speed buff? Yeah, same with, like, Rush, I yeah. guess, on a Gladiator or whatever. But, yeah. yeah I mean, the moral well, story is, is 10 inches basically means you're in punch zone. So yeah. 12 inches is a lot safer because that's very few things have threat 12 without, without some a speed, buff. speed right. bonus, right? right? I mean, if you assume that the, a generic fast heavy is 6 speed and then it charges 9 and has 2 inches of reach. It's only 11. Unless you have a Lanissa Rissel or, you know, a Hunter's Mark or some other Rush or mm -hmm. whatever. So yep. uh, keeps them a little bit safer. Um, so Shadow Play, how does that work? <laughs> oh, man. All right. Shadow Play is he casts the spell on a model. It becomes incorporeal immediately. Uh, okay. It is an upkeep spell. So and, and and the incorporeal only lasts for the turn. Yep. Um, let's get that on the screen there. The incorporeal lasts for the turn. It is an upkeep spell, and if the, you have the upkeep spell on a model during your control phase, they will then become incorporeal for Again. that turn. Yeah. Yep. Um, so what you there's a couple of things you can do with this. I can just make you incorporeal, or I can be like you're incorporeal, and you become incorporeal from the spell. And then I'm going to make you incorporeal, so the upkeep transfers to you, but you're still incorporeal for the turn. Now you're also incorporeal. Yeah. And then I'm going to cast it on myself, so now I'm also incorporeal. So it gives them potentially three incorporeals um, for the turn on three different models. It is an upkeep, so Marketh cannot cast it, so the max he can get is three of them. Um, but the moral of the story is it's not defensive, obviously, because for only for the turn. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So you're going to use it to get weird things into weird places. Ignore free strikes, go through models. Oh, yeah. yeah. So the, uh, obviously the intent behind this was he's the Lord Assassin. He makes himself incorporeal. He charges your caster. Uh, and the then caster he explodes. Nah, and he yeah. stabs him with mercy. And then also he feeds to make him blind so that you're minus four defense. No, he just blinds you with the fan. Or the fan. Yep. Um, this is probably the kind of weirdness that needs to be – Thoroughly explored yeah. because yeah, I, I, <laughs> I mean mortality's good. Shadow play seems good. Uh, Fury six seems good, but this guy, I just need to put him on the table and figure out. How yeah, it so it's like we're gonna probably see people trying incorporeal Moloch Karns, incorporeal Bronze Backs. Uh, what's fast? Uh, can't do can't do a colossal. The spoiler is kind of interesting because he has Isle of Sight. Mm -hmm. Does he really? Yeah. Random, random model with Isle of Sight. I believe you. His yeah. eyes are sewn shut. <laughs> Must have Isle of yeah. Sight. Uh, I don't, I don't totally believe you, in fact. I've changed my mind. I've gone to not believe in you. Totally straight up has Isle of Sight. Huh. Okay. The more you know. Yep. Mm -hmm. I hate you, Alex. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, so uh, Shadow Play uh, is going to be, like, super weird and, like, do super weird things. Sure. Yeah. And be, like, maybe super strong. I don't know. But, maybe. like, yeah, he could be weird. And he could do weird things. And it could be super powerful. Definitely. Um, and I think I think we're going to have to see that happen. Um, I think this the fact that he went to Fury 6, uh, I think we'll see him. We'll see him in, like, gun lines. Um, you know, oh, I just go up and make everything minus four defense, and then I shoot you off the table, right? Um, I think he's going to be fairly versatile. And then, obviously, he got Mortality, which is a great and powerful spell. Uh, the big kicker with it, probably the most important part about it, is Marketh can cast it. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, if you're not familiar, Marketh is basically the caster spell slave he attachment. He's spell slave, um, but better. So, because... Oh, I think the other important part about this, obviously, is going from a 5 to 6 means that, like, it's not the worst thing in the universe if he has to cast it. Yeah. Being Fury 5 is really sad. For trying to cast offensive spells. Yeah, you're yeah. going to boost and you're not. I mean, still not mortality on a Fury 5 caster is basically useless. Yeah. Uh, I think the real secret here is you get Marketh to cast it. Marketh can boost and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, Marketh is definitely better at casting it than he is. I, I, I think the moral story is is you're probably going to expect to take um, Marketh with him. Yeah. because. Uh, yeah. But I like seeing that, though, because a lot of the casters prior to some of these changes, you just never really took Marketh. Sure. Mortality's a really good thing to spell slave. Yep. Uh, so, based just on, again, none of us have got any table time with him, but based on what you see, what would you think you would rate him? Question mark? <laughs> um, I, I really have no idea. I, I would say, based on kind of what I'm seeing in the, the C range, I, I'm i not quite sure he pushes B. Interesting. I, I very well could be wrong. I mean, he could just be cra crazy. Thoughts? I think I have to see him on the table to really understand 
how he's going to... The potential he might have. Yeah, how Shadow Play is going to work out. What is he going to do? All yeah. that kind of fun stuff. Uh, yeah, I'm sort of in that range, too. Like, I think that he could do a bunch of crazy, wacky things, and he could be extremely powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, like, the potential... Like, because he's, like, deaf a jillion uh, um, with um, Eridus soldiers... Or, or the Sentinel with Eridus Sentinels getting swarmed back as an Animus. Um, yep. He's you can't knock him down. Mm -hmm. um, you put Swarm on him, so he's basically Def eighteen. Like I think there's, I think he's going to really reward um, the kinds of players who are like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play balls to the wall. This dude is gonna run up into the middle You're of your aggressive. army, feet you, and be. I'm like, I'm here, dude. What are you gonna do about me? I mean, that's I'm, that's I'm, the thing that I really like th that they've kept from. The, the first version of Morgul, Morgul 1 to Morgul 2, because they both play very similarly, but they mm -hmm. do very different things. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I think he's I think he's uh, probably, I kind of agree with you, he's maybe like in that C-ish range yeah. because you're, you're asking the questions of, like, his feet's really strong and mortality is really strong. Is that enough for him to, like, execute on the table? Right. And I think, he, I think you're the real reward is when you have uh, a player who can really wants to play super aggressive with him. Yeah. So. I think another thing that limits him a little bit is that his feet is line of sight. That's very much like a Sorsha thing, yeah. right? Same deal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't disagree. No. All right. Uh, Naresh got sort of like a quality of life change, essentially. Uh, Straight up buff. Yeah, I mean. Let's be honest. So all of his dudes have pain response, so they can charge and make power attacks for free. Yep. It is an upgrade, but it's also sort of like a side grade in the sense that you already you're getting free charges now. Yeah. It just makes it like easier, basically. Well, I think the nice Almost thing in what this kind of says to me is you can just take a ton of beasts with this guy. Yeah. Sure. And he's and always been good too. I mean yeah. like uh he 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 just we, he's just a really strong beast caster. I mean his feet's yeah. like super good. I mean good. he always has been and it's just better now. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then they quality of life his feet so it only affects living models. That's probably for like thematic reasons, right? Yeah. Um, and it's whatever. It's yep. it's it's just pure clerical stuff on here. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, Naresh has always been a strong caster, and will probably remain a strong caster. And I think you're right. This might. So the interesting thing about pain response is like you can have all of your whip guys start the game and just go up in like anatomical precision. One of yeah, your beasts, you one yep. damage, and then they all go crazy and start well, and throwing his, and his stuff. Feet also triggers pain response. Yes, which yes. is great. So you just automatically will get it if you need yeah, it. Don't this is sort of why I feel like it was more like a quality of life change for the guy. Yeah, right. I mean, it feels right for him to have pain response. Yep, both pain thematically response, and uh, rules wise. It might be a bit redundant because you already have the beast handlers there, though. Yeah. Well, like the the one thing about beast handlers, especially if you're running a huge battle group, is it's kind of difficult to you take. You can't get everyone. You can't get them everywhere, and sure. because you have to have them base to base now to get the free charge, it's it allows it really restricts where you can move the your beast sometimes. Yeah. So, it's nice to have that outside of. Bum, a little bum, more. Bum bum bum. Rasheth. Mm. Rasheth. Oh, Rasheth was probably pretty inarguably the best caster in the faction prior to the errata. 100% correct. That probably hasn't changed. And he got a change here, and that change is he can now channel as much as he wants to instead of through once. friendly warrior models, friendly faction warrior models instead of once per turn. Okay. This is insane. Yes. So Rasheth was already Real the strongest cool. caster in the faction. Definitely. And, stays and, and I agree that he probably still is. Yep. And basically what this change says what this change says is, oh, Rasheth can spell assassinate you now if he needs to, which was not an option before. Mm -hmm. Because before it's like he throws out his one nuke mm -hmm. and then the end. And now, now he's like, I blood mark you. Two two nukes and a blood mark. Yeah, or three Sunder Spirits or whatever mm -hmm. you need mm -hmm. to do. Um, it also allows you to project different things around the table. Yep. Blood mark this guy, Sunder Spear this guy. Well, like, the range that you can get out of this is insane. Because he's yeah. Fury 8, so you have 16 inches plus whatever the range yeah, is. Yeah, and this is where we're talking yeah. about, like, Blood Runners are really good oh, at being arc targets. Half then run 12. Oh, yeah. Or uh, oh, Master so Tormentors, because they have multiple hit points. You can go through them a couple times. Oh, yeah. Or Void Spirits, because maybe you can't kill them back because they're just incorporeal. Mm -hmm. Or, I mean, you could... 
yeah, it's nuts. And, like, his spell list is still a little strange. Like, if you have to criticize him for one thing, is the fact that, like, he's sort of all over the place spell-wise. He has spells. influence, sure. right? Yeah. yeah, he has influence. Like he, uh, uh, that, it, this might be one of the few occasions where influence is a decent spell. Yeah. So no, you can yeah, get totally. it around the table. Influence some weapon master dude and have him hit his buddy in the back. Or have someone shoot someone else. Yeah. I mean, all, all of the spells on his card are very good. With with very with varying effectiveness, but they're all good. Yeah. Uh, so what's your rating for Rashef? A plus. Absolutely. At least yeah. A plus? At least. No, yeah. what about an S? Maybe S. I, I mean, S plus? I think... S plus plus? S plus plus plus. He very well could, could push into the S tier. I mean... With this change. When, when we say S, what kind of casters do you consider as S tier casters? Right now? Sure. Uh, Haley 2. Una 2. Una 2, maybe. Okay. I think Una 2 is pretty still. hard to deal with. Yeah, Wormwood's really strong. And does Rashath deserve... I mean, he's got a feat that just debuffs everything that's kind of important. Mm -hmm. He has a lot of powerful spells. Mm -hmm. He does them from relative safety. Um, is he there? Maybe. 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 It, like he well, might. He might be. He's definitely close. Uh, he, he's not. either just, <coughs> just at the cusp of hitting there, or just, just at the bottom level. Here's what I will yeah. say about it. In general, in my experience, a lot of the S tier casters tend to be casters who are extremely heavily control oriented. Yes. And versatile. Which, and Rashad is definitely not necessarily um, super controlly. Super controlly. Like it, he's more of like a Denegra in that sense, where I'm just oh, yeah. I debuff your army. Not saying that Denegra. I mean, Denny still kind of an S. Yeah, exactly. Um, so does he? Is he S and is he Denny one enough to be part of the S? Maybe. Yeah, I, I mean, he's really good, and and the fact that the faction just got better, better around, around him. him. Yeah. And and to answer uh, to Prophet's question is is we're I think we're sort of this is internally right we're sort of rating them internally. Yes. But in mind of like how they sort of rate against the whole world as well slightly. Yeah. So so my. My ratings are going to be within the faction. Okay, that's fine. I'm down with that. I think, it's, I think it's too yeah. difficult for me to compare it to everything, especially just after the errata. So that internally, to else. Mm -hmm. I would say internally. Then he definitely is somewhere in that S range. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That, um, that would be. And I think he potentially competes yeah. on the sort of the global scale, as it were, across factions. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, all right, Tyrant Xerxes. Xerxes, Xerxes one. Um, so he used to have inhospitable ground, in Mark three. Everyone got rid of Inhospitable Ground except for E-Rusk. They made it sort of his signature thing. Mm -hmm. uh, they replaced that with Rift, which is a decent spell. It's an okay. Rough terrain. But uh, it, I'm not sure it's great on a Focus 5 caster. Yeah. <laughs> he would probably never have cast it. Yeah. Nope. It's pretty bad. Uh, they replaced it with Lurch, which is basically like the Horde's version of, like, Energizer? or Not even. It's one War Beast. Mm -hmm. Sure. So he's like... It's, it's like different. Kind of like it's a... It's the Horde's version of Velocity, maybe? Velocity. Um, Anyways, it's essentially, like, yeah, velocity one, you, you spend up to three Fury, and for every point you spend one of your uh, beast advances. So, mm -hmm. like, it's a good little threat extender. It gives him something to do, because basically right now he casts Defender's Ward, he casts uh, Tactical Supremacy, mm -hmm. and then he sits on his focus and doesn't really do anything. So he's kind of like a very static caster in that regard. Yeah. Now he has something he could consider doing with some of his focus, or I'm sorry, his fury, his fury. from turn to turn. Mm -hmm. So, like, sure. Like, he was already a solid caster. He basically had, like, a Butcher 1-ish feat, um, which is great. Yeah. He has two good buffs. Tactical Supremacy is good. Defender's Ward is fantastic. Um, and then he hits really hard. He's scary in melee, and he's fairly tanky. He was already a very strong caster that was very well-liked in the faction, and mm -hmm. they just basically got rid of a totally unusable spell and gave him something he may or may not use, mm -hmm. but I think you're going to use it when you need it. More you get up to three inches good. of threat. Yeah. And so... Uh, I, mean, I, I think that adding, making a bronze back speed seven before rush essentially yeah. is absolutely a threat 13. scary. Yeah. Like, it's just terrifying. Yeah. Um, I think Xerxes was a really strong caster. Um... Now I have to wonder sort of where his place is. Is like, well, do you run infantry? Well, maybe Makeda 1 or Makeda 2 just does it better now. Yeah, with the change to Cataphracts, like, people don't know how to play him anymore. Yeah. Um, and do you take, like, a Beast Brick? Well, maybe maybe Rasheth, or I'm sorry, Naresh does that better. I really hate, by the way, that it's Rasheth and Naresh 
are like two casters where they basically feel like they just took their letters and shifted them around a little bit because I always do that. It's awful. Yep. Yes. Um, but I feel like, okay, you take Naresh. Maybe Naresh just does it maybe better. I mean, yeah, his feet give everyone a little bit of armor and makes everyone a weapon master, basically. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's sort of like that strange combined, combined arms world he lives in where he takes some battle group, he yep. takes some infantry. Oh, yeah. He does a little bit of everything. He does it all pretty well. He's got the orders. But in a world of, like, extremely capable war casters that Scorn has now find themselves in, maybe he's a little, like, home alone kind of? You know, I think that with some of the changes to the cataphracts, which obviously we're going to go into a little bit more, um, I think it's possible that we start seeing them more often with him. Maybe. Sure. Again, like, I think that's going to – that's a, a nice, warm home – that a lot of Scorn players have had in the past. I mean, every Scorn player probably owns all of the Fist models. Except for me, because I started Mark III. Yeah, all the Fist models. Yep. yep. I don't own hardly any, <laughs> which is a shame. Yeah. Um, so I think he's still really strong. I just think he's doesn't really have a, a place at the moment. Um, the people need to experiment with him. Yeah, oh figure yeah, out where definitely. he's good. Uh, I think he's probably somewhere in that like high C-ish range. Sure. <laughs> high C. I see. <laughs> what about you? Um, I would say that's probably correct. Yeah. I mean, we've all had a couple games in our belt with Xerxes 1, so. Yeah, I've always been on the Let me happy put this slash way. mess side with him. I, he feels sort of like the convergence of Mark Three. He didn't change much, and he was already pretty good. And so everyone is like, oh, man, I'm going to go play this guy who changed crazy mode. I don't think anyone's really playing Xerxes 1. Mm -hmm. He was already deep good. Oh, yeah. But he didn't really change significantly, so I just don't think that people are putting the table time into him right now. Yeah. There's so many other things to play, and everyone played him to death in Mark II. Oh, yeah. yeah. Xerxes two. This guy didn't have any changes. No. No, nope. not at all. All right. Um, not at all. So he lost a couple war – he lost, like, a, a war beast point, I think. Um, One or two. Uh, Jason Soul's uh, lead designer originally spoiled him as getting battle host escort. Uh, they talk about here about how they removed escort because he could be potentially effectively armor twenty five. If you devote a third of your list to it, yes. <laughs> um, but that they didn't want a caster who was basically quasi Im invulnerable. Sure. Uh, so instead, they just changed it to field marshal plus two speed, which is. In many ways, maybe potentially better. Maybe. Because, like, you're basically getting the good part of Battle Host without paying any of the mana for it. Or the good part of uh, mobility without paying it. Yeah. So the, the downside is that so he does not benefit from it. Sure. Well, well, he well he, but, but, but he didn't get anything. Well, he, he did get from mobility. He did not get it from Battle, Battle Host. Host. Yeah. Battle Host requires them to be in your control range, too. Yes. And as a focus Fury 5 caster, this means that he could just have something anywhere and it's getting plus two speed. Yes. Isn't it Warbeast in this model, metals, model's battle group in its control range? No, I it's think Field Marshals says, are just... Right? You just get them. Just happens. Uh, he replaced mobility with Rapport and Rapport is the upkeep spell you cast on one of your uh, beasts that allows the beast to use the mat and rat of the spellcaster if they so choose. Uh, as well as doubling your control range, basically long leashing them, um, and then he ditched petrify for stranglehold, which I kind of feel is a little bit of a side grade. Yeah. I know I know, Spetri I know stranglehold sort of like I'm a hot sure button topic right now, like sure. because of wormwood kind of going crazy. But with Fury Five, you're not going to cast it. I mean, so it's going to take four. To so in most of the games it. that I've played with Xerxes, I cast petrify a lot. Yeah, because um, you just kill casters. Like drop it at your feet. Stranglehold is basically Marketh territory, right? Yeah. It allows Marketh to walk up there and go like zap. Yeah, I don't think I will bees. ever cast it with him. Um I don't think you need to take Marketh anymore, is the thing. Potentially. Um the the nice thing about Petrify was you charge their warcaster or their whatever, and then you drop a petrify at your feet, yep. which you miss. But it doesn't scatter anywhere. It scatters zero inches. <laughs> yeah. And then yep. so, oh, they're stationary. Oh. And then you're like, bonk, 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 bonk. Yep. And they die. Uh, so I think this is, like, strictly a side grade. Uh, Stranglehold's great and all. And, I, like, again, it's a really, like, sort of hot button topic sure. because Wormwood has been so so dominant. So good and, with it. And Stranglehold. But, but that's different when you're like, I'm 
it got infinite arc node. Yeah. And I'm Fury Fate or whatever. I can cast two or blah, three blah, of blah, these. Blah. Oh, yeah. uh, just having like a stranglehold is sort of like, sure, okay, I guess. Especially when you have to fully boost the thing for it to work. Yeah. Yeah, but a lot of people don't really truly realize that Stringle has the damage. Yeah. And it's power 11. Yep. So Every time with Wormwood, I boost damage. Yep. You have to. Yeah. Rapport, however, is a very nice spell for him. Mm -hmm. uh, it basically allows you to make your bronze back mat 8. Yeah. Or your gladiator mat 8. Or uh, I actually think the real key here is an Eratus soldier mat 8 because mm -hmm. they're basically bronze back stats, but mat 6 instead of 7. Um, so it allows you to take like a bronze back and a soldier and Tiberian. Tiberians are already mat 7 or whatever. Um, so it... it it allows you to do a lot of that mat fixing that's sort of lacking in the faction for your beasts. It, yeah. it is. Yeah, the, the six sixes across the board for most of them yeah. is pretty rough. And then as they sort of mention here in their little text box, you can have a uh, a uh, Archidon be 40 inches away because of long leash plus rapport. And I was like, sure, do I sure. guess. It's cute. You want to be on the back of the table? It is yeah. totally cute. I don't think I will ever have a Darkadon 40 inches away from Xerxes. No, with this spell, could you use his Rat 4 on, like, a spray and then use the better Rat 6 of, say, a Hydra? Yes. You spray over some of your own guys, use Rat 4 for them, but use Rat 6 for the army models? Is that actually how that works? Is it? What does Rapport say? Read it to me. It's right oh, here. Wait, right here. Target War Beast can use the spellcaster's current mat and rat in place of its own. When checking to see if the War Beast is effective, so it's a can. So wait, you'd like us to scoop back. You guys look like three talking heads. I don't believe you. I think you're you a liar. Forward. I mean, we're like three talking torsos. Sure. Uh, but anyways, um, the answer to that is I don't know, despite not being a judge. Yeah. <laughs> uh, on an initial read, the answer to that is yes, you can. Because, um, like, if you can choose to use it or not, want me to scoot back a little bit? I'll scoot back for you. Like here. They need to cheat to look in, I guess. Semicircle? Semicircle. We don't really have a lot of room here. Yeah, yeah. there's there's definitely not <laughs> a ton of room back here. It's a pretty small We have small a very board. small we television get station. Get, or get intimate. Anyways, back to the topic. On first read, yes, you can opt to use the Hydra's rat when you want to and his rat when you want to, which has, like, some really edge casey, sure, spray it your own guys. Cute. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I definitely have interest in using a, a Hydra with him. A Hydra with him and for the that. And the Hydra's he, definitely going to have a Is Hydra on speed it. five? Yeah. So it's speed, speed eight, seven. Speed seven, mm -hmm. up to nine. Yep. Charge is 12, 14. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Xerxes 2 was already a decent caster. He was okay. He was okay. Pretty okay. Um, he had a good feat, basically. Yeah. He was a good feat in mobility when you needed it. He was a feat on a stick. And he also hits like a train because he was literally a train. Um, God, and his his rhino has straight knockdown yes. on hit. Yep. Which <laughs> is awesome. So, like, yeah, like impact attacking knockdown is pretty real. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. super real. So how would you rate him? In uh, post errata in the faction. B maybe better if after I play him more. It's so maybe like B plus. Yeah, I kind of feel with you. I like I I think it's it, you cannot undervalue just all of your beasts being too faster. Yep. Especially in scoring. Yeah. Yep. You're you're just all your stuff is just, and like if you went off that alone, mm -hmm. like that warrants like seriously considering this guy. It's already the weakness of scoring beasts and. Once you yeah. fix it, yeah, he, they go he fast very well hard. may be like B plus A material. Yeah, uh, I think yeah, I think he definitely is going to be a, a very <sighs> extremely capable, powerful caster. If only because of that, then rapport does a lot of map fixing. Uh, his feet is still extremely strong, and sure, sure, hold whatever. Sure. All right, Supreme Optimus is all. Is all one? Uh, yeah, is all one. Uh, basically, he had Death Pact which is one of your units becomes undead and gets armor. Mm -hmm. They swapped it with Inviolable Resolve. Because Scorner G. <coughs> yeah, the Scorner yeah. thing. <laughs> he can now collect souls from those Essentially, guys. Essentially, Zol is like the ultimate soul collector in the game, and he could not collect souls from one of his units. Womp womp. Well, he, he redirects souls. He does not actually 
sure. gain them. But he could not redirect souls of guys who did not have it because they were undead. Correct. Yeah. Um, it's better. So he got Inviolable Resolve, which is a great armor buff. The sort of kicker to it is the fact that you can't push, pull, slam, whatever those guys. So they have like they're, they end up being extremely resilient. You throw that on uh, Cataphracts. Now they can't be. Uh, oh no, they can be not. Yeah, they can't be Hellmouth. Your Ember can't be Hellmouth. Uh, you can cast on yourself. You can't get Gallows or something. Yeah. Like if that like you're playing against someone that where that's a threat. There's a lot of there's a lot of. It's just a useful. It's it's just a good armor buff. You, sure. you basically took an armor buff that functionally stopped the caster from working as intended and gave him a better armor buff. Yep. Well, he, now he gets all the making souls. your beast arm twenty five under an agonizer is just so skewy. Yeah, especially when they can't like uh, like throw you or slam you too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's um, pain to kill. So yeah, it was it was just a very slight sort of like quality of life mm -hmm. change for him. Um, and he was already a pretty decent caster, so I liked him. His feats, uh, interesting. I, yeah. I, but I think Zal kind of is like, I think he's a, is a good caster, but I think he very solidly follows in that, like, low C, meh, range, sort of. Yeah. Sure. I but would definitely like to see him with some of the changes to the infantry, which might help him out a little true. bit. It's true. I did sort of forget the power swell last standing Yeah, thing. like... like That'll Five dice, power nine weapon masters, or or power twelve. Well, yeah, combos someone's ranking. gonna come along and prove to me how wrong I am oh, with that rating when they're like, Colossal. "I've just been." Like there's, there's gonna be someone with deeper pocketbooks than me who's like, "Oh, by the way, I'm running like seven units of 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 guys, <laughs> bar, whatever yeah, the FA I mean, is." It, it falls under like, and they're all last standard, and they're all just bar yeah. five Aww. dice. Yeah, someone's gonna come along and make me sound like an idiot, but mm -hmm. uh, but that's, that's definitely more of like a gimmick, sure, right? So it feels like a gimmick. Yeah, but it's gonna be really. It's a really it, strong. It's one. a really good one. All right, uh, Zol two. He went up to speed five. That's nice, cause man, he sure was speed four. Def he, ten. He definitely was speed four. No. Armor seventeen or nineteen or something. Yeah. He was. He was he's, a robot man. He's gotten some of his elderly years back. Yeah. Yep. So. Oh God. So this is just like a strict and useful upgrade, because he was sort of in like that realm of. Um, Rasheth, who's also speed four. Yes. And the kicker with Rasheth is Rasheth doesn't have a weapon, so he can't charge. Yep. At yep. least That's Zal can cast spells huge. and fail a charge. Yep. Well, and you can't even throw Rasheth now either. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Which yep. I have totally done in games before. Yep. Errata. Mm -hmm. Or the, the previous errata making it so you cannot throw your own models. And it yep. was definitely yep. very real to pick up and throw Rasheth down the table because... So you don't kill box yourself. Dirtling yeah, four into the so turn. Now. So and that's the same kind of boat that Zal was in a little bit. Yep. It allows him to get the places he needs to go to apply, you know, his... What is it called? Transference? Is that what's called these Transfer days? His transference? Because he's got whatever the spell is where you can use his fury. Yeah. There's like four words. Uh, yeah, it's all got different names. Pardon? Aura of power. Aura of sure. power. Well, it's called transference, right? And yeah. For whatever. For someone. Exactly. They all have a different one. Yep. Probably because they have to differentiate focus and fury. Yep. Um. So, yeah, he just got better, and he was already, like, a pretty good caster because Aura of Power is a good spell. Mm -hmm. uh, he has a couple very powerful, like, nukes, and then yeah. he has uh, Mage Sight, which is, like, underappreciated right now, but is clearly with, like, the rise of Tuna mm -hmm. and other things like that going to be much... Much more important. Yeah. He's really good against Tuna. Like, yeah. Especially with the lists that are taken, like, eight... Of the Griffin or mm -hmm. uh, Rotterhorns, Scar you, spells. Scar oh my God! Thank you. The Scar good spells. Ones. I always forget. Um, yeah. Scar spells. There you, you got all different names. You're gonna get like three of them every time. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, he just got better. I I think I honestly personally think that he was. I I think he's one of those casters that sort of you need people to unlock him a little bit. But I think he's actually like a really high B or low A for the faction in general. Yeah. So like he's like. Shockingly, much better than a lot of people give him credit for. Yeah. Um. And maybe that's, I might be like literally biased because of watching JLP play him as yep. much as he does. Uh, being Joel Presta, who uh, plays him a lot. I played that that game once, and he sat on like twelve fury and ran at me. Yeah. <laughs> and I could not kill him. <laughs> yep. And like, <laughs> yeah. It's just, I think he's a really strong caster, and he just basically got a a, a nice buff. So mm -hmm. I'm really fond of the guy. I think he looks like he's a great model. And I think he does cool things. So I think he's actually a really powerful caster. Yeah, for the I'm, I'm really excited to get some table time with him. Yep. Yeah. 
All right, so we're moving past the Warcaster, or I'm sorry, the Warlocks, and into the War Beasts. Uh, Agonizer, staple of the faction, went down yep. a point. Thank God. Probably not much to say about that. Um, Makes list better. So very, yeah. very big help. Uh, Aratus Sentinel, the shooty one. Uh, they basically turned his gun into a scather, so now it leaves a AOE. It's a three or four inch. It's a three. Three. Three inch. Yeah, it's a three inch. But it gives you a little bit of like area control and denial and sure. stuff. Scathers are always good. Uh, and then the other, probably even more important part, is the fact they traded out his animus from the awful acidic what touch, a, awful acidic was, touch yeah. to swarm, mm -hmm. which, which is Ashenvale. When, yeah, yeah, which is once you combine it with <coughs> the Kraya animus being there, and uh, just the like the other just general like the Hydra animus reducing ranges, like it suddenly there's options for casters to be like. Really death skewy, mm -hmm. right? Well, sure. the nice thing is you can do it with almost any caster because yeah. a lot of it is anchored in beast slash units. Yeah. yeah. So this guy just got better. Yeah. Uh, and he, he was definitely being overshadowed by the cannoneer. Oh, definitely. Now he has a place. Like, he he's has cheaper. the AD. Uh, he's cheaper than a cannoneer. He's got a useful animus. He's got and, a scather. And he drops a scather. Yep. So. What's the range on his gun? And he's also 12. a weapon master, 12. too. 12, POW 13. Teen weapon master or poison, so it's weapon master po it's poison, yeah. against uh, living models. So, yep. like, there's like a, f a a difference there, and like, there's probably a world where you take one of these guys and a cannoneer or some you know module mm -hmm. that incorporates both or neither or whatever. Got a yeah, yep. like pow thirteen instead of pow fifteen, but an additional die is actually better than a cannoneer math wise. Yeah, um, you just don't tag things. people from as far away. Right. The exactly. other problem with the Sentinel is he <laughs> really, really pillow fisted compared to a cannoneer. At least a cannoneer like enrages up to like an eighteen a, or whatever. Yeah, it's a sixteen and fourteen, I think. <laughs> the weapons. <laughs> which um, is definitely worse. Or better rather. Yeah. He is Fury four, so like that's a thing I guess. I think I think the extra damage. fury makes up for the loss and damage. I also think that Having Carapace and Steady is also really nice. And Pathfinder built in, too. And yeah. Pathfinder built in. Still uh, speed 3, though? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. You just take it with Xerxes 2. Yeah, yeah that's, just, that's, that's probably always the answer. Just yeah. take yeah. it with Xerxes 2. Uh, Arcadon. Arcadon got uh, Mute Electricity. Haha, oh, did that. Uh, he got a basically a point of strength, a, a point of POW. Uh, his point cost went down to 10, and he gained Long Leash. A lot of people are really excited about this guy. I will be excited to see him on the table. But I'm not quite sure what he does. I have had one in a box for like six months, and I haven't built it yet because <laughs> I've just had the same thought. Mm -hmm. I don't know where I'm supposed to use this, how I'm supposed to take advantage of it. He still just got the one attack. Yep. Power what base? 15 now. So 17. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Crit pitch. Sure. I, I think so. I think he has homes. I think those homes mm -hmm. are like. Hexy Hexies. one yeah. as an yeah. arc node. Hexy two as an arc node. Yep. You can get really cute with rapport and speed nine with Xerxes two. Under your feet, you can fish for crit pitches on their warcaster to get them over towards your army. Um, I mean, the thing is real fast, and it's def fourteen. Yeah, which is not irrelevant. Yeah, I mean, I and guess ten points is dirt cheap. Dirt ten points is dirt cheap, but Might I also the have to go like heavy beast. No. Yeah. Maybe? I believe you. I think so. It's maybe. Yeah, probably. Um, but it's like, I could pay 10 points for this, or maybe I just pay the extra couple, po five points for a gladiator, which, sure. like, I don't know, just eats eats other things. Rah, 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 right? I don't yeah. know. Yep. So, I, I, someone who's better at this game than me needs to, like, figure out what crazy, like, maybe it's one of those situations where you're like, I take my Warcaster. And nine Archidons, right? <laughs> you know, does that thing. If this game has taught me anything, if one of a thing is bad and two of a thing is slightly less bad, then 12 of that thing must be unbeatable. Yeah. So yep. uh, maybe the Archidon, you know, just needs that person to come along and really uh, champion it. And I, and I, I love the model, and I want to see him on the table. Mm -hmm. But right now I don't see a huge home for him, at least in the kind of lists I would typically build. Sure. So, uh, strictly upgraded, still not, like, personally seeing tons of uses for him mm -hmm. at the moment. I mean, he's uh, probably just good on the casters that you want sprint Yeah, on. you know, and like... Like Naresh. He's probably great on Naresh. I mean, yeah, so like, there's definitely value. Like, yeah, Naresh feet makes him POW 18. Like, Hexy 1, he's an arc node and you parasite the target and he's POW 20 against that guy if he's yeah. enraged. Like, 
maybe you just take like 10 of them and you're like going up and charge and eat something like there's definitely places and things to do that are going to be really powerful there. Or if you're seeing that um, new Signar theme list all over. Yeah. Or I mean, Storm Lances at all, really. It's true. That's actually kind of funny. He really goes and gobbles them up. Like, mm -hmm. he runs up, charges, kills one, and then just sits there and, like, jams out the rest of them from you doing anything. You can't shoot me. Um, and he's also def 14, so he's, like, hard to remove without, like, casually. Like, yeah. a random dude just swinging his sword is not going to do it. He also it. has a decent amount of boxes. No, he should be. He's a heavy, so. Yeah. It's all right for a heavy. I mean, for 10 points, it's a, it's a really I guess, I guess for me, I guess at the end of the day, what it really comes down to is, like, I like this dude. I like a lot of the stuff he does. I just don't see myself putting him in a lot of lists. Sure. So. I don't disagree. Uh, Basilisk Drake. Uh, change the Animus uh, so that it still grants Bushwhack, but also grants Pathfinder. So this is good. To sure. Because I, and you know, like, this is very definitely like a, hey... We want your Warcaster or your Warlock to be able to have access to Pathfinder if they need it. So Animus cost one or two? One. Just one. That's it's good. Nice. And um, the Drake is good. Yeah, yeah. especially now like the Kray is going to see play and stuff too. Uh -huh. Totally. Um, there's not a lot of shooty casters. I'm not really sure where this guy goes. Like maybe Naresh needs to get weird places. Maybe Makeda needs to get weird places. Maybe. Um, he really is just an Animus on a stick. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he flanks with Kreas, doesn't he? Correct. I mean, so that's something. You know, back in Mark II, you saw. He also a lot got a great spray. Yeah, back in Mark II, we yeah, saw Drake. You spam. saw Drake spam with with Xerxes too. Yeah. And to be honest, it's probably better now. It's very Someone should bring it back. I mean, you just native get Lee get the plus two speed. His feet turn hasn't changed, right? Mm -hmm. So, it's still probably real good. Yep. Basilisk Kreia. Uh, basically, the Animus went back to its Mark II version. Yup. Super, super important. Oh, yeah. And, and it, like, we'll probably sit here and talk about it. It doesn't really warrant talking about it because, like, it was such a fundamental cornerstone of the faction mm -hmm. already. It's been used and abused to death. You can now survive guns. Uh, well, and that's but, the crazy thing. But you used to see it all the time. But yeah. the, the more important thing about it now is gun lines are obviously more popular in the game because of pre-measuring makes guns very consistent. Makes um, getting gunshots off way easier. Yeah, uh, and so now they have a strong anti some anti gun tech when you combine it with, oh this animus plus quicken or mm -hmm. um, I think someone does Naresh have quicken as well. I think Naresh has quicken as well. Uh, he has blur. Oh blur, yeah blur. blur or Keltari with blade shield. It's like you have things that are going to be like from guns. Yeah, just yeah, that's, like ugh, you have God. like suddenly now you're not deaf ten. Gladiators or bronze back. You're def 12s. Like that, ca mm -hmm. you can be missed by something, right? They have to boost to hit you. Yeah. So like that's a big deal. Or even just the fact that you get the armor, right? You get the plus two armor or arm 21, is a big deal against gunshots. So, mm -hmm. very strong, powerful change. Definitely going to uh, uh, impact a lot of uh, list building. Mm -hmm. uh, bronze back Titan. He goes up to Fury five and down to threshold seven. Clearly a thematic change there, and sure. then Fury back up to five. Combined with free charges means that bronze backs go back to one rounding yep. any Colossal in the game. Let's Pretty much. Let's bring Bar it back none. to the one rounding Colossal. Uh, he countercharges you. He punches out a core system. You feel sad, and the next turn he kills you and then kills the guy next to you. And then after he's done killing that guy, he kills finds your family friend. and kills yeah. them too. Mm -hmm. uh, he, will, he will hunt down a – and, like, I mean, Parasite, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's like he's swinging like hammer, like like they're yeah they're like all right. The, the basically the world it's over. He's murdered it. It's all dead. Oh yeah. We'll kill a victor, no problem. Yeah, we haven't we haven't put one on the table yet. Nope. I, but I think we can. I think we functionally know what this guy is gonna do Same to his thing. Yeah. Don't ever let him get there. Yeah. I mean, like he still hit like a train mm. a train with four fury mm -hmm. and counter charge. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it's just better now. Yeah, so so you know he's. He, he, I think the moral story is he's probably worth his points and then a bit change more. He's like eighteen. He's eighteen. Hey, yeah. So we were having that conversation earlier about uh, beasts are a little overpriced. Uh, yeah. Maybe so how do you this guy. how do you feel? Well, yeah. How do you feel about the fact that your stalker, your warble stalker, my, my feral, who's eighteen? Yeah, or your stalker who costs one more point he's than 19. this guy, Mom. who can't kill nearly as much. Yeah. Hey man, at least you have an animus that's real good. Primal's all right. Uh, Cyclops <laughs> Primal's Savage right. went down a point. Sure. Sure. 
Sure. Maybe people will start taking him. Which one is that? Xerxes Zer- Zer- 2 guy. with 13 Sword savages? Guy. Okay. Yeah, the, the, maybe this leads to some spam. Maybe people just take a couple of them because they're like a fairly well-costed, efficient beast. Free, when you when you factor in free charges, like... Sure. sure. Yeah. Uh, Cyclops Shaman, armor up to 15. He was a 13-14, which is, man, that's like an old man stat line. 13-15 well, yeah. is still not so much better. It's yeah. a nice quality of life change, though. When you factor it in with a Kraya Animus, sure. being a 15-17 is pretty real against shooting. Uh, especially, especially because he's when like... you just need one box to do what you want. Yeah, which is cast Animus or shoot his weird gun thing. Yep. This is like a strict upgrade for a beast that probably wasn't being super used and like now has like a home. Yeah. Because like he basically sort of is like your other rush on a stick as it were. Mm-hmm. Or the upkeep removal thing. Yeah. Desert, desert mm. Hydra. <laughs> desert Yum. Hydra. Uh, so the, a dessert. The Desert Hydra, uh, he's quite sweet now. <laughs> yeah. There's a little uh. word play, a little <laughs> chair. Uh, so he went up to rat six from five. Good. Yep. Uh, Especially in the spray. And then his animus changed. His animus used to be bad. So and his, his animus in his command could not in shoot? In command could yes. Okay, sure, whatever. Bad. Which Basically, its command is six. Yeah. So you never use it on him. You use it on your caster. Who's that command? Nine. What or nine? The maximum inch guns? you can get is ten. Yeah. So what? Now what? Nine inch guns are in the game, or, or ten even? <laughs> like, no, no nine inch. Yeah. I mean, there's eight or whatever, but there's some ten. So now it's when you are targeting a model in the Hydra's command range, your guns are minus three range. Mm-hmm. So then you can also, your caster can do that, and they'll have mm-hmm. an 8 or a 9, typically. Oh, yeah. Xerxes 2, command 10, 10 on a giant ass base. Yeah, oh, yeah, so it's like, so basically the moral story is, is is helps your army get across the table, because now suddenly all their range 12 or 10 guns are 9 or 7. Even a long oh, yeah. range gun like 14, dropping down to 11 means that it's like dangerously close to being in threat range. Yep. Huge change to this model. Yep. Very anti uh, Especially combined with the fact that he's going to go up with 5 sprays, at Rat Six and spray down all your infantry, mm-hmm. like and then buy four melee attacks. <laughs> yeah, like this guy is a monster now, and which is a good thing because the mammoth was just like strictly superior. Oh, yeah. Now I think like now I think there's a close, reason to be like honest. during your list yeah. building to be like which like, one do I take? The only thing that's a little iffy on the Hydra is that it's a little a few less boxes and like sure. one or two and armor less. One right? armor less. But what I love about the Hydra right. is with the Grievous Wounds change to Colossals oh, where s- you can it. still heal and this thing gobbles up infantry and it yep. and it uh, eats them all and heals oh, yeah. off of it which is oh, yeah. uh, yep. both awesome and hilarious. So I mean if, if, if you are playing an infantry spam army this thing is going to be almost impossible to kill. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think he's got a lot of game into things like Sloan. Yeah. Because suddenly... Uh, Sloan does not like having to s- move towards you to shoot. <laughs> yeah, oh. suddenly hunters are now range 11, basically. Sure. I mean, there's fire group, and they start off with really long range. But yeah. still, Sloan does not ever want to close with you. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't You don't get to – they don't get to stand behind their walls and shoot you anymore. Yep. Uh, yeah, so de- Desert Hydra just got way better. The spoiler – the uh, range of his tail went up to two from one. That's great. Uh, Good. And he f- and then as a result, his point cost went up one. Uh, sure. Definitely understand about this is that basically means he is a two inch. He now went from a one inch dark shroud to a two inch. Yeah. So That's let's see. Worth the point. The spoiler <laughs> plus parasite plus bronze back equals two pow much twenty power. or yep. pow nineteen pow twenty two pow twenty four with nine, nine attacks. Nice. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, uh, don't stand both of your Colossals next to each other. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> For real. Oh, and the spoiler, if you took him with Hexy 1, you get a free upkeep. That's two free upkeeps. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, probably game there. The spoiler was already really strong. Like, he has a really old man stat line. Holy smokes. He's, he's like an 8, 12, 18. 12, 18. No, he's an 8, 11, 18. Oof. Oh, yeah. He Which is. means he's, he's low defense and low armor. Yep. And he costs a lot of points. But he does have Arcane Suppression. He does have... Free upkeep for your caster, and he does have Dark Shroud on two-inch stick now, which is very, very nice. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, this dude's awesome, and I think he's got awesomer, yep. and allows you to, to put the the Dark Shroud out there from further as it's much nicer. I've never regretted putting him, him on the table. Uh, Moloch Karn. Moloch Karn went up a pow. Yep, and he went down some points. So he was always a pow 13 weapon master. Now he's a pow 14 
Yep. Which means he enrages to a 16, so mm -hmm. he's basically Butcher. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, dude probably needed it. He was such a classic staple last edition. And I think we're probably going to see a comeback, especially with goofy stuff like Makeda one jackhammering him or giving him Quicken. Lash and Quicken. Uh, Nare uh, just everyone turns this guy on. Like, Rasheth, all of his armor debuffs turns this guy on. Naresh with all the buffs turns this guy on. Like... I would like to see him back on the table because he's pretty sweet, and yeah. I'm hoping this helps this does it because he has the potential to have some wacky, wacky spikes. Sure. Anything to say about Malakarn? Do you even own Malakarn? I do. I oh, yeah, you used to play him all the time. I haven't used him yeah, in turn into, Yeah, I haven't used him at all in Mark III. Well, now you can throw him across the table, and he'll kill everything when he gets there. Uh, yeah, I'm totally down with that. Uh, Reptile Hound's basically got a nerf. Um, instead of taking a pair of them for seven, uh, functionally three and a half points a model. Now you take one per four. Uh, this is clearly a response to like, hey, what happens if you just take 30 of them with Xerxes 2? Like, they definitely wanted to like curtail a little bit of that a kind of, of weird jankiness. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, they're cool models. I'm not really sure there was a huge reason to take them. I'm not sure there's a huge reason to take them now unless I you're really looking for four points to spend. I mean, Paying four points for a shield guard with Makeda is not bad. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think I would have preferred if they, st like, I would have preferred, because they have flank. I think my personal preference would have been for them to go down to three, because I feel like that's a little bit of a harder niche to fill in scorn. Because mm -hmm. you have will breakers are four points. Void spirits are four points. Yeah. Uh, tor Master tormentors are four points. The only three-point option you really have is you have, uh, Solar. You have the man, the man catcher, or I'm sorry, the... Um, that's the name of its ability. <laughs> uh, it's the minion solo, and then you have the soul ward. Yeah. So I would have. I think yeah. I would have been nice to have a some different three point options mm -hmm. there, and especially in like the beast side of things. Yeah. Whatever. I see what the purpose was and why yeah. they went with I mean, it. It's fine. Yeah. It's. I, I just. I think he's just not going to really see a lot of table time as a result, unless someone just happens to own a billion of them. I'm sure someone does. Someone out there does, and I and I hope you enjoy using them. I'm hoping that the four point thing is right where you want them to be. You can only take 25 of them. It's true. Yeah. It's an outrage. Hrenudon. The Renadon definitely got a lot of uh, got a lot changes. Of uh, so he went up a POW. So his base POW 15 mm -hmm. and then a pair of 14s. Uh, he went up to arm 18. I think he was a 12, 17. Now he's a 12, 18. He might be an 11, so. 18. He is 17. a Pokemon. Oof. Yeah, he was because he's got spiny growth. Oh. Uh, and then the tail uh, went to range two and gained crit knockdown. Sweet. Uh, so that's a lot of love for this dude. Um, love he, team. Especially because he is a Fury 3 ca uh, beast. Oh, yeah. So, But he's like a budget beast. Like, he's like a budget heavy. And I think you're getting a lot of value out of him because he's going to be having a POW 17 crit knockdown tail. Mm -hmm. uh, assuming you get a free charge. And then he has another pair of initials. And then if he needs to, he crosses the table under a Cray Animus, going to arm 20 and spiny growth in himself. Yeah. Dude's also speed 5. Which, which is, is totally like reasonable. So that change to reach really helps him kill infantry. Yeah, Yeah, because he's got Thresher still, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Having a 1-inch Thresher was just R not... Real sad. Real sad. Gave him really no purpose. Yeah, I definitely see, like, there's a realm where you take a bunch of these with Xerxes 2 or other things. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, I, think there's, I think there's lots of potential for this guy. He's, what, 12 points? Yeah, yeah, he's cheap. Um, he's a good cheap heavy. Yeah, definitely. I, I think I think you're going to get 12 points of work out of him. I think he's going to kill any other like mm -hmm. heavy he encounters in the game if he gets the charge. Yeah. And I think that's a good piece trade. Bring a bunch of them <laughs> with a uh, armor swing caster. Yep. Uh, yeah, so I like that guy, and I think he just got better. Um, you should have bought that one when it was on clearance sell those months oh ago. Oh, my God. I kept telling I you. Know. Six didn't. months ago. Yeah. That thing was so cheap. I <laughs> should have bought it. Uh, Scarab Pack basically got a clerical change because the wording was weird. What really changed about it? I, it, if it didn't change, I, all it did is reword it because it was confusing. Sure, whatever. Okay. And moving on. Uh, Titan Cannoneer went up a point of rat from four to five. Holy smokes, this is nice. Yes. Uh, because Thank God. as a Fury 3 war beast, it's basically locked into the aim, animus, boost a hit, boost damage. Yep. Right? Like... And, and it can't boost any of its blast damage if it does that. And then as a result, being rat six aiming, like the potential still totally exists for you to miss. Just miss, yeah. A 
Def 15 or 16 Warcaster. Oh, yeah. Or, heaven forbid, it's a it's a Def 14 or 15 Warcaster behind a wall. Like, yep. you're you're aiming to a 9 or a, to a seven 6 now? before. Now That's you're it. aiming to a 7. Now you're aiming to a which 7. Which like, is way So better. much better. Like, the math on it is just, like, it really helps out when suddenly you need 7s to hit. Uh, like, it means that he doesn't... Like, you can get away with not boosting if you really had to. If you really had to, like, not boost to hit the, a 14, like... He can actually do it now as opposed yeah. to needing an eight. Like it also means that you don't have to boost after moving to like hit heavies. It also makes sense because like the point of the cannoneer is that like these are all wild pack of crazy pachyderms, and this is like a trained one, which is why they give it a gun. Mm -hmm. So like, sure, it should be rat five. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Gladiator got nerfed up to 15 points because, man, that guy's in every list, and not just because he was a rush stick, but also because he was very cost effective. And also a rush stick. And also a rush deck. Oh my god, you guys nerfed my faction! <laughs> Put essential animus <laughs> and heavy hitting. All right, on to the infantry. So uh, we have all three of the uh, cataphract, units. cataphract units here. The RQRI lost CRA. Uh, they, oh, for the first off, they all gain tough, so we won't cover yep. that every time. That just makes sense to me. They all, all lost boxes from the Mark III exchange. All of them getting tough nice doesn't quite equal three boxes, but at least it's a step it in the right direction. Quite make up for it, but. It's nice. You'll Something. maybe see them again? Hopefully. Hopefully. Yep. All right. So they lost CRA, but gained Weapon Master on their Harpoon. Awesome. I like this. They're still fairly low range and not the greatest speed, but I think there's a world where you take min units of four of them and you just walk around and people, and you either go, oh, you're in range of my Harpoon? Cool. Dunk. Drag. Or, oh, I can charge you? I'm also a Weapon Master mm -hmm. and Comp Melee. The, the funny thing, too, is their their pow on their weapon, their pow strength on their weapon is higher than Centrati by one. On their melee weapon. Well, sure, they're swinging a harpoon, bro. Yeah, I know, but it's sweet. Yeah. So I think these guys might have a world. They're a little fragile to shooting, but hopefully a lot of the other changes like the Cray Animus, uh, Sandstorm from the Dessert Hydra. I'm just gonna keep on the Dessert Hydra. <laughs> yeah. I like that now. It's a it's a tasty hydra. dessert. Yeah, the mm -hmm. dessert the Desert Hydra. Building it is not a dessert. Um. Anyway, <laughs> oh man. <laughs> That thing was absolutely... Yeah, you built half of it, and I finished building it. Uh, line, anyways, so... so Don't the worry, it was worth it. Best yeah. sculpt ever, right? <laughs> no, we're not going <laughs> to so go not get into that. The uh, Desert Hydra Animus, the Cray Animus, all these things will hopefully help deliver them across the table and survive a little bit. Yeah. Yep. Um, I think we're going to need to kind of see them on the table and see what they do, but I think we should start playing with these guys a little bit once the Invitational is over tomorrow because I'm really curious to see what these guys have the potential to un do. Mm-hmm. Uh, so then Satrati, which are like the key shield core wall shield wall guys, they gain set defense, which is probably thematically <coughs> and functionally useful. Then we got the big spears. Yeah, they had huge spears that are like holding like this and mm -hmm. stuff. Um, and then their point cost went down quite a bit. What was it? Before? I think they were 20. Ooh, for max. Uh, yeah. So I went think down two points. Went down two points. I th so I think these guys are now, uh, how much is a unit of mana wares? I don't know how much mana uh, wars are off the top of my head. It's about the same, right? The thing about mana wars is that you get five guys yeah. compared to Scorn has some six weird guys. Well, same with uh, Circle does the same thing. Not all of Circle. Like, medium based Tharn are four, six units, but Skinwalkers are a three, five unit. Shock Troopers are 16. For a full unit? Mm hmm. So, so, full 16, unit so math wise, similar. they end up being about the same. When you factor in the whole extra per guy, body, yeah. So you have six guys at five is thirty boxes versus five guys at eight is forty boxes, right? Am I crazy there? Am I doing the math right? right? Uh, so mana yeah. wars, but they're also slower. Sure. So one speed slower. Yeah. But these guys are weapon masters, but mana wars are power fourteen. Yeah. Maybe they're about the same, basically. Um, it probably fell the same role. They're they're pretty like. pretty close. Yeah. Set defense helps them a little bit. Means they're deaf like 13 on the charge, which is the right deaf to be. Um, it's where the math starts mattering. Yeah, it's where you might consider boosting if you can. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is a great change for them because it might hopefully see them on the table a little bit because with the Vorkesh, they're now, what, a 24-point package? But he gives them yes. a lot with the spell ward mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff and no I knockdown. Mean, Vorkesh is great. And like we brought up with uh, when we were talking about Xerxes 1, everyone owns two or three units of them. Yeah. Except for me. Except you. Yep. You should. 
Uh, Go back in time, play Scorning Mark II. I like these guys, and I want to see them on the table. I think they're going to be a cool unit. I think they look mm -hmm. cool, and I think they'll be pretty decent. Uh, I think that being able to get them across the table with either the Hydra or the Kraya Animus um, will go a long ways to making them a little bit, like, not just get shot off by a random dude with a hand cannon, because mm -hmm. that's kind of what was happening to them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and Cindyari gained tough. Cindyari. Uh, they went down. They're pretty cheap now, 11-17. Mm -hmm. So 11 points for a minion to four is pretty good. Like, that's basically what uh, essentially just under three points a model. Yeah. Uh, and then the power of their gun went up to a 13. The real key element here is that now your splash damage is up. Your blast damage is a 7 From power. Six to seven. So, yeah. So, like, that's like a deal. Like, yeah. that's good. Mm -hmm. so I don't know why I didn't see these guys before. Because and, there was no and infantry everything's on fire. Yeah, I guess. These guys are infantry killers. They just start drifting AoEs that light you on fire all over. And when people weren't running infantry. Mm -hmm. So, this, I think they are good. I don't think we're going to see a ton of them until people start bringing lists to deal with things like Makeda. And then you're like, oh, now to bring my Incendiary to kill all of your infantry. Yep. Oh, yeah. That's also probably pretty good into Una because you just, like, start drifting AoEs. Place F1 on a bird is not great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially when I have seven boxes in a column. All right. Extoller Advocate. Uh, so this is the UA for the Immortals. Immortals. Mm -hmm. Uh Basically, they have a you can spend souls to re-roll attacker damage rolls, and they re they got rid of that because they took away the speed increase one he had, mm -hmm. and we'll get to that on. So sure, it's just yeah, they're like they, ba they even said it. They said like, well, we took away his one ability. We just gave him something else that's kind of cool. Sure. I mean, I like it because if you have collected a bunch of souls, especially if you're playing like something like Zol One or Zol Two, gives you a way to get rid of. It them. means that the immortals can like. Puppet strings, all of their bad rolls when they're giving you a paddling, yeah. right? And they're like Mat 6, right? Yes. And their so re rolls are good. But they are POW 13, which mm. is nice. So, yeah, so the re roll is helpful. So Get rid of your little spikes. Uh, is this like alpha? This must be alphabetical because it would have yeah. been really nice to see the Ancestral Guardian. I guess we're still in units, is yeah, why. Sure. All right, all the right. Great Bears. The Greater Bears. A Legends of a Lock. Uh, all the changes. So, they basically, and this is kind of true for most of the character units, they all have flank. Except for Ish? these guys now. Yeah, I think they the did. Great Bears do flank. Do the Death Wolves Death flank? Wolves might flank. I know that the uh, troll ones have Weapon Master. Anyways, these guys ditch flank. They all just gained Weapon Master. They all gained a point of defense to 14. They all gained Matt up to 8. They all went to speed 7. The Command 8 now. The Command 8. And uh, I think the Command 8 was sort of like a concession to the old flank rules where yep. you're like, they were like Command 6 and you're trying to like, fl they also had like flank and stuff and you're like this is kind of weird yeah so now it means they can spread out and like this guy goes and hits that thing and this guy goes and hits that thing right um they just got way better mm -hmm. in all mm -hmm. regards yep. uh they all hit really hard they have a bunch of great special rules like uh defensive strike and the one guy's got combo smite yep. uh they're all mat eight so they're hitting whatever they feel like hitting like they're going after your caster dude yep i mean they're going to speed seven. One of them's got two inches of reach. He's going to find your caster and kill him. They're all good weapon masters, too. Um, oh, I they have relentless charge. speed is seven. Holy yeah. crap. They got relentless charge, if I recall correctly. Boys built in. Uh, they do have relentless charge. Um, and like now, and with like a Kraya Animus or a Hydra Animus, like you can deliver them across the mm -hmm. table. Like they'll be deaf 16 and shooting. With Parasite, they go up to like Bar! POW 15 weapon master. Yeah. So, yeah, these guys are great. I'm r and you just bought yours. Yes. And we need to put them up. together tonight. I'm really excited to see these guys at the table. I have not experienced them firsthand, but I think they're going to, at eight points or whatever, I think they're going to start becoming a staple of mini lists. Sure. Mm. Uh, beast Handlers. This is a significant change. Uh, basically, while you're base to base with them, you get a free charge. It is not an action. It just, just happens. Yep. It just so happens. You can walk up, be base to base, heal the beast, enrage the beast, add or remove fury from the beast. And then the beast activates, and you base to base, so you get a free charge. And the cute thing about this, too, is, like, you can have two beasts, and then you can have one, one guy dude in the butt, in the bu in the butt oh cleavage yeah. right between <laughs> them, and they both get free charges. Like, there is some – this is – they have I'm, – I'm not sure I'm going to say the best, but maybe, but they definitely have, like, the most, like, consistent and, like, easiest to pull off free charges I of any so. faction. And it Doesn't might just be the best. attack roll. Yeah. There's no run from having range. zero mm -hmm. free charges in the faction. Period. Do we have it all having, the free charges? Having uh, this is a giant. You, it's a unit that was taken in every single list, and Still suddenly all of their. And then, 
And, you know, this is such a huge quality of life change because you talk about a, uh, a war beast like the Titan Sentry yeah. who's a Fury 3 beast. Oh, yeah. But he has like a million initials, right? Well, now he's got a million initials. And sure, he's only Fury 3 still, but now he's he's effectively a Fury 4 beast with a million initials because he's yep, getting a free, no free charge. charge. Yeah. Gladiators, suddenly they're basically effectively a Fury 5 beast. A Bronzeback is a Fury 6 beast. Like, all your beasts are not losing any of that those extra attacks. They're... It's, it's a huge upgrade for all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Especially when you look at the beasts like an Archidon or a uh, Rhinodon, mm -hmm. who are like, you're, you look at them, you're like, yeah, they got some upgrades, but they're still Fury 3. Free charges change the math so much. Yeah. Yep. It's <laughs> massive. I mean, it could have been just that. I mean, like, wow. Uh, Ferox, probably the, were the best unit in the faction. Previously, probably, yeah. Best unit? Previously? They were taking a lot. Probably. Yeah, I mean, you were using them in like practically almost all your lists. Um, they're so good. They do well. Basically, they. I l I probably liked Reavers more towards the end of the, before Errata. I sure. was just using those more typically. Well, the Ferox do a lot. They're fast. They've got the jumps. They have the pounce rule. They go forever. They get boosted damage. Yeah. Now they're just cheaper. So yep. we saw them before. We're gonna see them so more. Buy two units. Yeah. Now we're just gonna. Yeah. Yep. I need to buy a second unit. <laughs> uh, Keltari went up to speed seven. These are like your generic jamming unit. They got yep. blade shield. Like hard to kill, don't hit very hard. Yeah, and, and that's definitely like a quality of life change because now you have like a clear like separation of what all of them do. You have like yeah. the Karax, who are like the slow shield guardy defense or shield wally defensive ones. Yep. You have the swordsmen who are like the accurate hard hitting ones, and you have the Keltari who are like the speedy jammy ones. They all have like a, a like a thing they do in the game, which oh, is yeah. really nice. Uh, you put Quicken on them, and they're like death sixteen against shooting Blech. speed nine with reach. Nope, not okay. Uh, Praetorian Swordsmen. All right, here's a big deal. All right. They went up, up to Mat 7. Good. Because their old mini feat, which got replaced here, was they got boosted attack rolls. So I got compensated for by giving them just a boost to Mat, which Sweet makes sense. They're elite soldier guys, sure. And then uh, they got a new one. <laughs> they got a new mini feat, which is Power Swell, which is Yay. what... Insane. Which is what uh, Six 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 Raiders, Raiders used to have. Yep. Uh, so basically, for one turn, they become Weapon Masters. Uh, this On is a giant unit with Combo Strike. They have combo. They combo strike up to pow twelve. They're base nine. Yeah, they got two or two base nine. So they have sidestep, penetrating strike, power swall, relentless charge, combo strike. Uh, I already said sidestep. Yeah. Side step. So they can like this one guy can everything. charge in, hit your target, get four dice of damage, uh, sidestep over, kill a different model, or you can run in, combo strike, pow twelve, pow fifteen with parasite because that's mm -hmm. kind of like our hot button word for the night. Like there's a these guys can do a lot of things now, like they're unkillable with Makeda one. Uh, it's a very, they'll be very five dice with Xerxes one. one. They'll be four dice. It'll be five dice. Drop the lowest with Xerxes two. Yep. They'll be five dice when last standing with Zal one. Like, well, the Real crazy good. thing about Zal one and these guys, and this is going back to that gimmick that we were talking about earlier, is you're just five dice all the time because you're doing this on feet turn and you're just auto boosting the damage on every attack. Yep. Just, yeah. just so good. It's real good. So these guys I think we're gonna start seeing at least a unit show up in a huge majority of lists. And I will not in like your list, for example, you've been playing is Makeda one is oh yeah, two double swordsmen. Yeah, double swordsmen. Are they FA one or are they FA two or FAU? FAU. Yeah, like there might be a world where people start going like Infinite min units with UAs. Maybe like there's Ooh. gonna be we're gonna see weird things happen. For like both guys. Does, does all yeah, yeah does oh all man. one list that I was thinking of was like straight up just trip. Yeah. How trip many swordsmen? Can you fit? Yeah, yeah the, trip the, swordsmen. The Praetorian swordsmen could be that kind of unit that like just changes the way people build lists in the faction. Because they're the also fast. Yeah, they're death thirteen. You. I can mean, they are almost animus. in every list that I've been writing lately. They're really strong. They're just very good. So much Weapon Master Infantry. And Relentless Charge is super useful in this world of more terrain. Like, And, and the nice thing is, like, POW-12 combo striking charges are not bad to begin with. No. Yeah. And, like, they're really good at killing infantry. POW-12 Weapon Master but is... they're also serviceable with their feet to kill heavies. Sure. Yeah. Or the mini feet, yeah. And there's definitely... I guess there's not a ton of... Except for Parasite, there's not a ton of, like, armor reduction... But there are plenty of feats and There's abilities around, yeah. that increase uh, your mean, damage. So you take Resheth and oh, Bloodmark. Ignite. You forgot about Ignite on Xerxes too. Yeah, yeah. you put Ignite on that unit. Uh, yeah, these Powell guys 11s. are gonna be crazy. It's gonna be real. Uh, he got tough. 
Yeah, Tycom. Uh, basically, if you were a dude wearing big armor, you got tough. So Tycom got, got tough. Borkesh got tough. Borkesh was already pretty decent. He's mm -hmm. pretty expensive, but he offers a lot to the unit. The unit got mm -hmm. cheaper around him, so we might start seeing them more. Mm -hmm. All right, Venator, Reaver, Officer, and Standard. So Venators, we saw, we were already seeing a ton of previously. I've been tons and tons and yeah. tons Especially with, like, Rasheth or whatever. Oh, yeah. Gun lines. It would be crazy with Hexy, with Parasite. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically what they had is they have a mini feat for Snipe. So they're walking 6 and shooting 16, potentially walking 8 if you have a Tycom oh, yeah. shooting 16, potentially walking 8 if they're quickened, 10 if you have a Tycom and yeah. shooting 16. Then on top of all of that, which they could already do, now they've also been granted combined arms so that when they make CRAs, which they're doing more often than not, you can re-roll your misses. What's their base rat? Yeah, five, like insane. all things with CRA. The rat five, pow 12? Pow 10 base, sure. but they got burst fire, so plus one for every base size. Yep. So you're probably just going to two-man at the very least. And Usually. And be rat seven, pow 12, and, and oh, man. With a to hit. I, I miss you from forever infantry, uh, forever and ever away. Oh, I got to yep. reroll it. Now you're dead. Like these guys, I mean, let's talk about like the, I mean, well, we'll kind of do a, a roundup at the end, but man, these guys are a winner of a unit for the faction. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I mean, they were good before and they're yeah. better now. Blah. Yeah. Uh, Venator Slingers, they gain advanced deploy. I think this is a great, yeah. helps differentiate them because they were really losing out to Venators who just threat yeah, they were just for days. Very underwhelming. Now these guys at least start up the field, can walk mm -hmm. and start lobbing flares or whatever. Oh, yeah. They're also super cheap. They're very so inexpensive. Like a max unit is 13, 13 uh, points. So you, ran, you yeah. ran Jason Watts' projected Hexy 1 list today. Yeah. It featured two units of them. Yeah, it was, uh, Those guns reach out and touch One you. Reavers, double Slingers, uh, a couple of Catapults, and uh, two Cannoneers. Mm -hmm. And a Sentinel, and a Sentinel. in tier. So. And it's, it was good. I, yeah. I, I like the advanced deploy because I feel like it really, like, thematically and in-game terms helps differentiate from them for what they ever did. It's also I think nice to free up some space, I also too. think they're really good in the theme list. So Yeah. Yeah, I think they're good. Everyone likes AD guns. Yeah. Uh, they're only Rat 5, but... Sure. I mean, everything's kind of Rat 5 if you've got a gun unless you're Signar, so... All right, Ancestral Guardian. So we talked a little bit about the UA earlier. They mm -hmm. took away the speed, and then they gave it resonance to the Immortal. Mm -hmm. do, or, I'm sorry, to the Ancestral Guardian for Immortals. So what happens here is uh, if a model or unit, of an, if an Immortal model or unit activates within five inches, so if that's one dude in the unit, mm -hmm. they all get resonance, and resonance is basically they get plus two movement when advancing. So from really helps when your unit's speed six. four. Yeah. So, yeah, suddenly they're, they're speed six, basically. Or, I'm sorry, move six. So yeah. they don't run as far. But sure. Uh, I think this helps out Immortals a lot. Be mm -hmm. Now, I guess, like, there's a tax, obviously, of you have taken an Ancestral Guardian. Oh but, no. I mean, they're, oh no. they're not terrible. You might have done that anyway. Possibly. Um, I've always liked the Immortal theme. I hope, like... Immortals, like that whole like image of an army of you take a whole bunch of terracotta yeah. warrior guys, oh, yeah. like that. They, they, they that keep building vision. on that. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah. I hope and so I, I hope that that the theme of immortals and stuff continues. Like I hope this we s we end up seeing more of immortals on the table as a result of this kind of stuff because I think it's yeah. cool um, having having those dudes on the table. And I hope that this makes them be a little more playable. I don't know. You only own like one unit, and I feel like if you're gonna run immortals, you like want a million of them? Yeah. Question mm -hmm. mark. So this is kind of like a budgetary constraint. I mean, with Zal 1, this works. Zal 2 as well. Well, Zal 1 has uh, Kovas, so he probably always wants all the Ancestral Guardians. Oh, yeah, good call. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Zal 1 definitely likes having Ancestral Guardians. So, yeah, I mean, this is like a strict upgrade. Um, yep. But, I, like, I don't have much to say on it because, like, I haven't, I haven't personally played or seen I mean, it's good. a ton of Immortals. Ha having Immortals go from speed 4 to speed 6 is very good. I think if you're a big Immortal fanboy, you probably love this change. Mm, yeah. JLP is loving it. Uh, Optimus Marketh. Uh, so he's the character Warlock attachment. He's the only character. Uh, is he the only faction <laughs> character attachment? For casters? Um, I mean, outside, outside mercs and minions, obviously. Outside of, like, companions that come with Lose caster. Targ. Oh, they're they're outside tarred, mercs yeah. and minions because yeah. they have like Silas and stuff. But I think I mean, in a like in a Jack and inside Wormwood. a faction, Cassius and Wormwood. Yeah, but I'm saying like for but one, like you can take any guy. One. Yeah. yeah, no, I don't th Silas. I think he's the only one. He's a merc. But I'm saying outside of mercs and minions, so like Squire, War Dog, those kind of things. Yeah. Any faction is this those the only characters. character one? I think so. And then yeah, I mean obviously outside companions. Yeah, yeah. So 
he was pricey. He was six points. That's like two way points too, more. Way too much. But he is like magic ability seven. So like there was like an eliteness associated with oh, him. Oh yeah. Right? Um, his point cost went down one, which mm -hmm. is very Helps. helpful. Oh my lord. He was so hard to fit in the list at six points. Five points is like a nice, because oftentimes when I'm f building lists, I will find some random spot where five points is all I have left. Uh, yeah, this six is points yeah. is really, really nice. awkward. Yeah, super yeah. awkward because it's, yeah, it's not quite a unit. It's more than a solo usually. Yeah. Uh, his armor went up from 12 to 13. Thank God that this guy <laughs> is so easy to kill. He still is super easy to oh, kill. Oh, yeah. So his stats are low because he has ghost shield. Mm -hmm. So he collects souls. If he he also them. can't upkeep the souls. <laughs> I'm sorry. He only gets free upkeeps if you pay souls. And then his armor only goes up when he has souls. So, like, this dude is like... He's like a clock you have to wind four times to get going. Because <laughs> oh, yeah. So, like, okay, my guys have to die for him to not die. and then Maybe not die. And then I have to make him I easier to, to kill. Then I use those things I got for my dude dying. So, to, mm -hmm. to play the game better, I need to be losing. And then, yeah, I mean, it's just Bouncing like, axe. holy smokes. Really so, I, I think if anything it, it, to be said here is that the fact he went down to five points is, like, really big for list building. Mm -hmm. So Sure. And there's a lot of more places to use him with a lot of spells like Lash being changed and getting Stranglehold. Like, there's opportunities mortality. for him to be in lists. So, yeah. Um, I think that that's just a nice quality of life change. Uh, Hakar the Destroyer gains uh, Veteran Leader Exalted. Uh, this works with Zalt 2, right? Uh, Exalt 2 an Exalted model? Probably. Is he? So, I think this is a really funny change. So first off, casters are a lot of times not exactly what he is an exalted model. Jesus. <laughs> so Mac goes to what? No, no, no. Oh, he becomes attack rolls. He becomes focus eight for oh, for nukes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, good. good. So there's another so little buff for Zol two. Just just take so a Zol two a car. Those are Zol two. Uh, and then make then obviously makes immortals. Uh, mm -hmm. Matt seven. So like this is. Again, this plays back to like that whole immortal theme, right? Like, oh yeah, the, it mm -hmm. feels like it feels like before you could play the whole immortal gimmick, but you're like kind of lackluster. Now it yeah. feels like there's like a, 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 like it exists, right? Mm -hmm. You got some speed, you have some rerolls, you get some more mat. Like it has a lot of the the pieces there. I'm hoping that someone makes it live because I'm not sure I want to spend the money <laughs> on for, like, the three units of immortals plus like the two ancestral guardians plus the Huckar destroyer. I'm getting there. Yeah, I'll I get there. there. You um, almost got all those models. No, not even. <laughs> yes. not even. You, see, like, you have like one, one unit and one <laughs> caster. <laughs> yeah, I, I need two more units of mortals. Hakar. So I didn't realize about Hakar when I looked at him the other day. I didn't know he was Matt Nine. Yeah. Oh, so dude's butcher. Does he veteran leader himself? Mm, no, uh, probably not. Other friendly. Uh, but yeah, so like he's like a gnarly killbot machine. Yeah. So I'm glad and. He, does he get the ancestral card? Does he get resonance? He's See, not an immortal, guard. but what does the resonance say? I think it's immortal. I think I'm probably past it. You are past it. No. All right, just look up. Here we go. Resonance. Uh, immortal. Resonance immortal. Okay. Too bad. That would have been sweet if he went up to speed six. Um. Anyways, like, how much does he cost? He's pricey. He's seven points, but you like. Got like ten boxes and. Super hard to kill. I'm ho I'm hoping that these are the, the, the these are suitable changes for people who are big fans of the theme or want to yeah. get into it. That definitely to do makes the, the uh, immortal Turk theme. The immortal guys real better. Yeah. Much, oh yeah. Much better. And like there might be a there might be a world where you like just take him with Zoltu so that Zoltu's focus. Magic eight <laughs> with all thirty of his focus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's just like zud 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 zud. Because mm -hmm. he is definitely gonna be just shooting spells Spell out. Spell assassinate casters if they're sloppy. He has like annihilate too, so. <laughs> All right, we're almost at the end of the list. We've got, like, three models left to go, and then we'll do a little bit of a roundup here. Yeah. Uh, Paingiver, Master Blood, Paingiver, Bloodrunner, Master Tormentor gains Weapon Master. Great. I like this change. Good. Sure. Yep. So that was the – she apparates. She's got Thresher with analytical precision, so she just kills one wound infantry. Now she gets to go up and, like, kill heavier stuff too. Yeah. Or cripple a jack or something. Oh, yeah. She's pound nine? Ten? Who? Nine. 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 What I like about this is she was definitely very lackluster in comparison to, like, Nis Warlord mm -hmm. or Mage Hunter Assassin. Now she, like, at least she's uh, compete on, like, the same level as those guys. Oh, no, yeah. she's eight. She's an eight. Sure. But she's also Mat eight. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. Still, it's Weapon Master. 
Yeah, I mean, and it is still anatomical precision. Yep. So sure. it will annihilate an entire unit of infantry. Yeah. Of everything in Threshers. Yep. Uh, oh I, yeah, and it has Threshers. I was already a big fan of the model, and Webmaster is just a strict upgrade. Like there's, yeah. uh, there's no way about it. So. All right. So Pangiver Taskmaster. So this is our. Which uh, one is the Taskmaster? This is the minions one. Ah. Uh. So basically. It had the aura of making tough for minions, which yes. was like not it's a three inch aura. not useful because all minions are basically tough unless you're a frogman. Yeah. So now There's it became no a star action, which is fine because if you're, in my opinion, yeah, no, it's because like I guess if I take croak raider, croakland raiders, the croakland raiders, I really want to make it work. Because crooks. you can also give them reposition. Repo yeah, three. so then the other which action again is, is Scudder, which is the one that uh, Mobius. Mobius had. The new um, guy. And so now, uh, so your two choices are you either tough them or you give them reposition. Reposition is really strong. Mm -hmm. means that your Crokeland Raiders can go up and throw and back out. It means that Posse can charge and back out or advance and advance again, basically. Mm -hmm. um, Brigands already have repo, don't they? Yeah, they do. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like there's some potential there. I mean, you can also do weird things where you take like, can you take a, who's prey guy? Totem hunter. Can you take totem hunter? No. Uh, no? Well, I'm sure I can. Everyone, I think I can. You, you can also take uh, Everyone can take every minion, You know what's right? also weird? You can do weird things like, uh, you can, uh, put it on like, uh, Orin Midwinter. Okay. Repo three him. He walks up, lightning bolts some dudes, and then repos yeah, back. I can totally yeah. take totem hunter. Or, yeah, walks up, stealth himself, repos into a better position for uh, arcane vortexes. Yeah, like there's some there's some like interesting potential here that someone's gonna figure out. Mm -hmm. So like I love the model, and I always like the idea of enslaving the minions in scorn. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I think I think like the dream that we all want to live is that they make minions <laughs> friendly faction. But oh like, my no, God. it's never gonna happen. Oh, I mean, if it wasn't gonna happen so here, good. it's never gonna happen. So. I still have uh, faith. Yeah, maybe in some world down some the road they, they want to do it. But uh, for now, like, giving repo to minions, there's lots of weird things you can do. And yeah. I, and I, it'll, it'll be interesting to see if anyone does weird things with them. So, uh, And then, unfortunately, not quite on the screen, just because of the nature of scrolling and how our little overlay is set up, you can't see the CJ Anthrax. So I'm going to lay it out for you, and you'll have to see it with your mind. We're just uh, looking at War Room. Or low, yeah, open yeah. room. So uh, the CD Anterax, uh it increased the speed from four to five. Yep, yep. Uh, the double reaver range was ten, went to twelve. So this is basically putting in line with the artillery cannon. Uh, the point cost of the Anterax went down to seventeen. I believe it was eighteen. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the double reaver gained a new rule where, in addition to getting the bonus damage for base sizes, it also gets Bonus to hit rolls. To hit and damage. So it's a bonus to hit and damage on base size. Uh, so good. All good. that's real good. The speed increase means that when you whip it, uh, whip it real good. Whip it. Uh, it goes the base speed eight, so you can get some weird move, shoot, or weird mm -hmm. charge or trample, mm -hmm. shoot, because it's got pl uh, dual attack. Um, the range of the double reaver means this thing threats from a million miles away. Yeah. Uh, the point cost is a little bit more competitive. Uh, so, And then the volume fire thing is really interesting because now it threatens circle heavies. Uh, base rad is what? Five. So it goes to seven. It goes to seven against a warp wolf. That's a problem. And then it becomes POW 15 when it hits. Whoa. So. Don't like that. Hmm? I don't like that. Don't like that. No, not one bit. Not one bit. And so, like, I think, like, I think a lot of people look at that and go, like, Oh well, I was shooting a Kador heavy already, and it's just defense ten. I don't. Know, but like, what happens when you're shooting Crix heavies? Yeah. Or, or circle or Angelii. heavies. Or in Jelly Eye. Or in Jelly Now it's suddenly like, <coughs> oh, this thing like can actually hit them like normally, like a mm -hmm. normal human, like a like a real boy. Like this a real. This thing has boy. a ridiculous amount of attacks, both with range. Oh and yeah. Melee. So it's got dual attack, so it can charge in. It's got crit brutal on the tail. It makes spear attacks. Mm -hmm. It shoots the gun. It can spin blood tokens or rage tokens or whatever for buy more attacks or boost. Like, I, I've always this has always been one of my favorite models, and so I'm really excited to see it more on the table. And it basically like they literally took every like stat on it, basically like went boink, yep. and yep. they brought the cost down. I'm glad they so. rebuffed it after 
nerfing the Mark II buff that they gave it right before the end of Mark II. Yeah, the like the weird like you can spin the tokens on like range. You could poke it yourself to give it core you could, tokens, you could, so and you then could, you could have boosted yeah, so the they, range damage rolls. So they them. made it so you could poke it yourself to give it the rage tokens, and then they made it so you could spend the rage tokens to boost range attacks. Then they kept the poking it yourself, but they took away the boosting, on range the boosting of range attacks and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So, But you can fully boost melee attacks. So everyone who bought a uh, Animatrax because of that change, you can play it again. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm a big fan of this, and I really want to see it on the table. Uh, the problem is, is all of like, the beasts just got so much better. Like, yeah. Is there a reason? When you're already spending points on beasts because you have to, battle yeah. engines are... Uh, does this thing fit into the great. theme? Like, is it... Part of the theme, like you get, does uh, it count as free stuff for the theme? It does not. It is not a Venator mo model. Yeah, it is. Isn't it? Isn't it? No. You lie. Not. You're lying to me right now. The world it's will tell us. It's not a battle. It's not a Venator it's model. Not a Venator. <laughs> it's, it's not. It's not at all. But it, it, it doesn't fit into the theme or anything. That's strange. If you feel like it would. I thought it would. And then I oh, tried no, score, to make a list. Scorn Battle Engines. Yeah, yeah. It just doesn't give you free things. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't contribute to the free models. Sure. But it, you can take it. Yeah. Yeah, if um, it contributed to the models, that'd be dope. Yeah. One of the Resheth lists that I pr played recently was with this and um, a couple units of Reavers and some Cannoneers and stuff. It was it was good. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, that's that's the kind of the whole breakdown of the things. We went. We talked in depth on some things. We kind of cruised through some other things, but they're pretty minor changes. Yep. Uh, let's do a quick roundup. Sure. If you had to pick... I'm going to just select super arbitrarily. One change? If, uh, how about a caster, a unit, and a beast? Like, if you, what, what do you think is, like, the thing you're most excited about or you think is the coolest and all that? Uh, Mikado 1, Swordsman, uh, Beast. I'll probably say Hydra or Kraya. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? Unit, definitely Swordsman. Those guys got way better. <coughs> uh, beast, maybe Moloch Karn. Yeah, I'll be interested to see if he starts seeing table time again. Yeah. I think he will. It's a small change, but it means a lot for him. Yeah. yeah. Especially with the faction changing around him. Oh, yeah. Caster, I don't know. There's a lot of good changes in there. Yeah, for sure. Hexy one? Maybe? Hexy one solid. Se sexy hexy. I was actually very impressed yeah. with what I saw today. So hexy one is now sexy hexy. Yeah. Uh, for myself, I think I'm most excited to see Morgul 2. I've always loved the model, yeah. and I like what he does, and I think there's some, some potential for him to do wacky stuff. Scooey things there. Mm -hmm. Beast wise, I'm I'm also very excited for the Hydra. Um, I love the model, and he just got like just light years better than he was. Oh yeah, and I sure. think it's super has a place in a lot of lists now. That that um, animus is a monumental change for it. Uh, unit wise, I'm not as excited. Like I lo like I like the swordsman, and I'm, I'm I think I'm excited for the cataphract stuff sure. the most. Yeah. Like the swordsman are I think the swordsman are gonna be great. But I think what I'm really excited to see is see some of the cataphracts, like either the Insi or not sorry, not the Insi RQRI. RQRI. the RQRI or the Satradi are the ones I want to see on the table the most. Mm -hmm. I, I already know what the Insidiari do and like how they function and when we will see them. Yeah. Um I want to see what the other ones start doing on the table now. Sure, so sure. uh those are definitely the things I'm really excited about the most. Definitely. Uh well we ended up talking for a long time, but I think yeah. it was some good content. Yeah, I really absolutely. I learned a lot about Scorn. Yeah, and we've been like it's been a big journey like for Scorn and like we were like we were like first off we were kind of panicking on whether or not the Errata would pop before the Invitational tomorrow because we have a couple <laughs> Scorn players. Yeah, uh, it was a, it was a stressful con week. Tuesday. Con Conversely, yeah, yeah. Conversely, I'm sure we have a lot of other players who are less enthused because they don't know any of your stuff. They don't know yeah. anything about this like, anymore. Man, yeah. uh, I already <laughs> didn't like playing against your list. And yeah. now your list just got better. Uh, okay. Yeah, no one you're knows. Now the ultimate does. dark horse. Yeah. Now that you're playing um, the new faction. Sussy as heck. Yeah, <laughs> super sussy. Uh, I'm really excited to see what how Scorn does like on the world stage competitively. Yeah. I hear Especially Jason Watt's playing. Jason Watt coming back, I think, is big. I think a lot of players yep. are going to adopt the faction. Yeah. I think it was a big PR win for Privateer. Mm -hmm. Obviously, is pretty like. Almost universal, you know, approval. Almost universal well, praise. People think they got everything the, right. The interesting thing for me, like, about Jason Watt, too, is he has convergence in such high – He like, he holds convergence in very high regard. Yeah. He thinks it's one of the best factions in the game. And for him to, like – Leave it to go to leave score. Leave it to, to start playing Scorn again is a huge, like, yep. vote of confidence for the errata. Absolutely. I think. We'll have to see how he does with it. All right, one last question before we sort of do, like, a goodbye and a sign-off mm -hmm. and all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, what are your odds on Tom Guan? 
<laughs> jo- joining the faction. Joining Scorn. <laughs> Ooh. The Tong Wan faction. It's hard to say. Uh, I'm going to say no, because I don't think there's any Scorn armies for him to borrow. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to say maybe. Depends how much uh, I don't doubt he can find he will. a downtown assassination. True. Oh, they totally that, That's what so he goes for. Dude's straight up going to play Makeda with Mullet Karn. Yep. And he's going to just table. jackhammer people to death. Uh, I'm going to give it a 50-50 on whether or not his, like, Australian visa expires <laughs> and he has to move up here to live with Pagani and borrow a Pagani army. Yeah. We'll see uh, if he forgets to get a visa in time again. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyways, uh, thanks, everyone, for sticking around, listening to this talk, uh, or alternatively, if you happen to watch the VOD and manage to tough it out through all of us, mm-hmm. blathering about the faction. I hope it was all a bunch of useful information. Um, we're really excited about Scorn. We're a pretty passionate community about War Machine, and we have several Scorn members that we play against regularly. So, uh, like, a lot of really exciting and cool changes and, it, like, big, like, the sort of reignition of our excitement for the faction and the and the game going forward, oh, yeah. oh, especially yeah. with like three theme forces coming out for everybody and like command books releasing and coming out very soon and getting new models. I know you're looking forward to February. Kai uh, three and Loki. February. Is that February release. I, I don't think remember. So. February, March, something I like think that. So. Thanks, you know, like it's definitely the next one. <coughs> Kador and Legion coming up. So like, there's like a lot. And then you know we have the. Uh, New uh, community integrated development and like yep. m- March or cool. something. Whenever that goes live, it's gonna be a very exciting year. So yeah, so we have a lot of fun stuff. It's better like coming up real soon for War Machine. So we're all yeah. really excited. I think that this is like the herald of like a like a first big step for like privateer in the community and the game in general, like Absolutely. really evolving. Good and line. so I think it's gonna be a great year for War Machine. And hopefully maybe we can meet and do this kind of thing like probably not every week, but maybe like maybe once a month we can once talk about all yeah. the new releases Definitely. and stuff yeah. that come out maybe. and whatnot. So. I awesome. uh, hope you guys enjoyed the content. Uh, I don't know, you know, again, we're we are here at the benefit, the behest of uh, the <laughs> lovely Eric Benson, Debbie Lutz stream. So I know yep. he posts the vod, but um, I'm just gonna like show it, like go and like or upvote it or whatever you do to these videos. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not do a it. YouTube guy. Get this guy. video out there. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, uh, and I'll probably post it maybe to like the Facebooks and the Reddits and things like that. Yeah. But anyways, yep. uh, if you guys have any questions, put them places where Eric will see them, and then we will see them. <laughs> <Do> <laughs> it. Yeah, for sure. And then maybe we'll get back to you. I don't. <laughs> I, I don't know. I've never been a content creator before, and I'm only like half of a content creator now because it's not even my channel. So, <laughs> anyways, guys, uh, we probably will not going to end with a game tonight. It is 8.30, and I do technically work here, and I do <laughs> technically clock <laughs> off at some point. Um, so uh, check back with us. Uh, probably maybe next week we might stream some War Machine. Um, but always make sure you're watching the channel and following and uh, following Divi Loot's Twitter and all that kind of fun stuff. Yeah. Um, and until then, we will see you next time on Unplayable slash Unbeatable Garbo. Un- unbeatable Garbo? <laughs> all right, guys. Un- un-something Garbo. Yeah. All right, guys. Have a great evening, and we'll see you next time.